Welcome to the channel and welcome to this 4,000 point game of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It's the forces of destruction versus the forces of order. Kind of. That's right, folks. Today we have returned to Excelsis. This is the start of Chapter 3 of our narrative campaign, The Siege of Excelsis. Now, if you haven't seen the others, don't worry, you don't have to. This is a standalone game in its own right. But if you want to uh, catch up on where things are at, the previous two chapters, which is 12 episodes, are available on the channel. Right. For those who are still here... The story so far. Well, more a recap of the ending of Chapter 2. So, Godrak has assaulted the main gate with his battering ram made from the skull of a god beast. However, the gate had been mystically reinforced by Lord Croak and the, the battering ram shattered on impact, hurling Godrak over the wall to a fate not yet known. Seeing this attack on the gate... Uh, fail, Kragnos sort of metaphorically shrugs his shoulders, puts his head down and barges straight into the wall in a line along it, bringing down a mile-long stretch. And the Mournfangs who were following him start pouring into the city. When I say Mournfangs... I mean, gore grunters, yes. Undoubtedly, there were some more f mourn fangs there too as well, but the words are all melding into one. One of the unintended side effects of Kragnos's charge at the main, uh, near the main gate was that all of the heavy defence cannons on the battlements were retrained on Kragnos, but he shrugged them off like light rain. However, on the north face three mega gargants took the opportunity of the distraction caused by Kragnos to assault the wall and bring it down in the north on the north side as well and they have stormed into the city followed by the thousands strong horde of bone splitters led by warboss Gulgaz Stoneclaw the city is being defended by a host of different forces of order and their mercenaries. In the city are the Knights Excelsior, multiple free guild companies, and they are all lining the curtain wall. In recent days, recent days, weeks, the uh, the governments of the city have hired as many mercenaries as they could get their hands on. They've hired Caradron. They've hired Fire Slayer mercenaries. They have hired Ogor Sellswords, who turned up saying they knew that the city needed uh, some defence. And were they willing to pay? They're each being paid a barrel of meat and a barrel of mead each day. Although, they're not very happy because the, the, the cheeky government are pushing their luck and putting the meat in a barrel, then topping it up with mead. So it's just one barrel. However, it tastes delicious. So, day is not minding. But, you know, we're watching them. Yeah, yeah. Other forces defending the city. They've hired even a trio of necromancers who have forsworn the gash to study the possibility of raising mega beasts rather than sentient mortal souls. The city is being defended by a thin line, a menagerie of different forces. And at this point in the curtain line, the wall is just out of shot. I, I did think of just putting it in a line across the back, but it would have made it like really difficult to lean over and play the game. So the wall is like just there. Almost where that wall is, is where the curtain wall is. In fact, white stone curtain wall, less shelving, but that's, that's more or less what, uh, what it looks like. Uh, the curtain wall is just there. The thin line of the defenders are here. The uh, forces of destruction are already smashing up the buildings as they come through. Here we have... So, here we have 4,000 points of Knights Excelsior 2,000 points. 
Ogre War Tribes, a thousand points. We will go through these in a minute in more detail. And Fire Slayers from the Blaze Roar Isle have crossed the Clawed Sea and have been hired to defend the city also. Over there, we've got three Mega Gargants, the three Mega Gargants that have smashed up the wall, and as many Bone Splitters as we could get for the points and slash or fit on the table. So, we have... We've got some armies. We'll do a detailed army. You, you notice this is a bit different. We've got the armies down whilst we're talking. Well, that's because, you know, massive. Uh, but we'll go through those in a minute. In terms of the uh, the mission that we're playing, we are playing Drawn and Quartered, open play, third edition rules. There are four objectives, each in a different table quarter, more than 12 inches from the centre, more than 12 inches from each other, more than six inches from the edge. Each turn, holding an objective, gains the side that holds it a point. At the end of the game, if the scores are equal, it is a draw. If one side has more points, but less than double the other sides, it is a minor victory. If one side has double, it is a major victory. And I am joined here on the channel today to play this game by... These two fine fellows. Say hello, fine fellows. Hello, hello fine, fine fellows. fellows. <laughs> that worked fantastically. We've now stopped laughing because that was zero rehearsal and totally improvised, and it was fantastic. So we have James from Clash the Dice. We have Immortan Joe from just from from being really dark and evil about everything. That's you know that's Joe's thing. Both have been on the channel before. Today, Joe is commanding the forces of order with, with, with the Ogors. With the Ogors. They're being orderly at the moment. They're hired mercenaries. But the Fire Slayers and the Ogors, I think it'd be nice if they had some kind of mercenary keyword and some mechanic yeah. to attach them to any other army because, because they are the ones that really do do that the most out of uh, all exactly. the other armies. And and the Mega Gargants. Mega yeah, the, do that. yeah, Sons of Bearmat, they can do that as well. You are quite... Quite right. Speaking of Sons so of Burma... So there is precedent. Yes, quite. And James is playing the Bone Splitters and the Sons of Bayamat. Now, in terms of how this game is going to work, kind of, well, each army has got all the stats of being its own army. So it's got its own battle traits. It's got its own general. It's got its own enhancements. It's got its sub-faction. It's got, it's got its own pack lunch. It's got everything. So we have a Storkast army, we have a Fire Slayer army, we have an Ogor army, we have a, Meg a Sons of Bearmat army with three Mega Gargants, and we have a Bone Splitters army. Okay, contested point of discussion. Somebody has suggested that the Ogres don't have their pat lunch. What's that then? What's that? It's a barrel full of like meat and mead and stuff. And there's a bone sticking out of that one, and he's probably going to nick these apples as well. These apples are from, Mar and the other barrels and crates are from marchofwar.co.uk. The battle mat is from Urban Mats. These buildings are from Urban Mats. These buildings were a present, so I have no idea where they're from. These big barrels are also from marchofwar.co.uk, the channel's official painting studio. March of War painted this Fire Slayer army and the bases, and they are beautiful. Shout out to James. Big thanks, James. Not that James. Not James. Different James. If you saw episode two, James was playing the Sylvaneth in episode two. These buildings are GW. And some form of but the pumpkins the pumpkins are also march of war now this is in pumpkin town but these, these are imports from pumpkin town which is a place in shayish where there are many 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 pumpkins because when james was doing the scatter terrain for me he said do you want a few pumpkins i said yeah all right a couple of pumpkins there are a lot of pumpkins anyway uh i think i've ranted enough now maybe we should look at the armies or maybe i'll ask these guys what i've forgotten and then we'll look at the armies Yes, I very much did forget something. So, command points and orders and heroic actions and stuff. We're going to say that the command points for each side make up a pool of command points that can be spent on any of the units. However, only Fire Slayers can issue orders to Fire Slayers 
and the Ogres can issue orders to Ogres, and only Stormcast can issue orders to Stormcast. Um, we're going to use the normal way of accruing command points. You know, one if you're going f uh, first, two if you're going second. But each general on the battlefield will generate a command point each turn rather than just one general. Um, <clears throat> there are obviously only going to be two generals on the side of the Bone Splitters. So the Bone Splitters uh, general... Gulgaz Stoneclaw. Gulgaz, Gulgaz Stoneclaw. Thank you. I've, I, I've, uh, I've downloaded my memory uh, over here. Uh, he is going to generate two command points. That evens the numbers up with the sides, but it's also a, a lot of eggs in one basket. If he goes down, then that's two disappear. Also, heroic actions. We are going to say rather... Because this is a bigger game and there's lots of stuff, we're going to say that there are two heroic actions uh, per team per turn. We could do one per army, but three might be a bit much on this side, so we're just going to say two two on each side. Um, anything else that's restricted like that, we will work out as we go along. There might be some things we haven't thought of, but we'll come to that when we do. So, let's go and take a look at the armies. Right, so first we're going to look at the forces of destruction. So the Sons of Behemoth, I can see we have uh, we have three Mega Gargans. This is a Siege Breaker? Gate Breaker. Gate Breaker, Siege Breakers. Horus Heresy, oh dear. Uh, Gate Breaker. We have a War Stomper and we have a Beast Smasher. Okay, so um, what are the traits, uh, the battle traits of the Sons of Behemoth, please, sir? So they have Mightier Makes Rightier. Right. And what that means is each of the Mega Gargans has got a degrading stat, which is how many models they count as when they're contesting an objective. Right. So obviously that's got not it. a bit, bit unfair to say that's only one model. <laughs> well, quite. That's only one model. Yeah. So it counts as 20-odd and then deteriorates as they take damage. Okay. Um, they also have another battle trait called Lord and Master, which is you pick one of your Mega Gargants to be the general of the army, and that then dictates what their sub-faction is. So I've chosen the Gatebreaker to be the Lord and Master. He is the heel of the foot, and because of that, they are now considered to be a Breaker tribe. So Gatebreaker is in charge, so they become a Breaker tribe. Now, Breaker tribes... Um, They've got several, it's their foot sub faction. They get several extra rules for being a breaker tribe. So they get breaking down the houses, which gives plus one damage against units in buildings. Right. But that only affects man crusher gargans. We ain't got any man crusher gargans. Right. We've also got ramming speed, which allows an 18 inch 3d6 charge. But that only affects man crusher gargans. We ain't got any man crusher gargans. <laughs> So, I'm noticing a theme, a recurring theme, Joe. It's the same with all the tribes, whichever one you pick. Um, so this would be a Smasher tribe if we'd have gone with the, um, the uh, sorry, it would have been a Stomper tribe if we'd gone with the beast, uh, the, the War Stomper. And again, most of the buffs that they gain from the sub faction only affect Man Crushers. Okay. So, so it's all of them. what are are there any that affect the Mega Gargans? Then let's. Today is going to be yeah. complex enough. So there is the final one, which they get, which is Fierce Loathings, okay? So Breaker Tribes despise civilization. Well, that works. <laughs> and you get three things that you can choose from, three Fierce Loathings that you can select from. And the one I've chosen to go with is Idiots with Flags. <laughs> okay. Now, that gives plus one for Gate Breakers and Man Crusher Gargants. We haven't got any Man Crusher Gargants. So we have a Gate Breaker, yep. Yeah. It gives plus one to hit in with melee and missile attacks versus any unit with the totem keyword and also any unit with command models. <laughs> now, I had to look up what the definition of command models is and it's there in the, um, the core rulebook and a command model is a champion, a musician or a standard bearer. So if it's got a champion, a musician or a standard bearer in, he gets plus one to hit it. Ah. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I, had, I had to check every single FAQ and errata and balanced data sheet and whatever else there was to make sure that has not been nerfed and it has not well, been Well, what I'm thinking is I know that the Ogor musician is a bellower. He doesn't have an instrument. He just shouts. 
How would he know? That's a musician. He's got a flag, though. They've got flags. Well, yes, yes. But if the flag's dead and the champion's dead, we're going to need to have a conversation about the bellower. <laughs> so I think Joe's going to kill off the bellower's last thing. <laughs> <laughs> so his command trait, he is monstrously tough. Now, there's some command traits that you can select for any tribe, and that's one of them. So monstrously tough. This guy's generally got 35 wounds. Because he's monstrously tough, he's now got 40 wounds. Got that, Joe? 40, 40? wounds? 40 wounds. That's 10 four times. His... <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's mathematics. Um, his artifact is a Breaker Tribe specific one, and it's the Great Wrecker. So this thing that he's carrying here, his Fort Crusher Flail, any sixes to hit, do an extra D3 mortal wounds in addition to other damage. Oh! But the other two Mega Gargans, they're just standard War Scrolls. They don't get any other buffs from the tribe. Okay, so that's the Sons of Bear in that army. Yeah. Right, oh, now let's talk Bone Splitters. Okay, now we're over here on this side of the table with the Bone Splitters. So lots of units of various types. Um, let's talk Battle Traits first. What's their thing, James? Uh, so they get several battle traits. One of them is Tireless Trackers. And I can select half of the units in the Bone Splitters army rounding up and they get a five inch pre-game move. So that's the first bit. Get closer. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. I'm sure. They all have war paint. And war paint gives them a six up ward because it's the might of Gorka Morka protecting them. It energizes them. Energizes Mag magic them. paint. Yeah. So they get a six up ward save. They can declare a war once per game, which happens in the combat phase, start the combat phase, and that increases that six up ward to a four plus ward for that phase. Four plus. Four plus. Not five plus. Not five plus. Four plus. Four plus. Yeah. Then, <laughs> He's wincing now. <laughs> Sorry. And then finally, we've got Spirit of Gorka Morka, which is any sixes to hit become two hits. Okay. And it, when we, the, the very first game that you and I played with my bone splitters, it only affected units with five models or more. And you said, that's stupid. It should surely extend to characters. Well, they've FAQ'd it, and it does now extend to the entire army. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the big boss. Right, so he's he's the big boss. He's the... Was that your all your battle traits? Yes. What's the sub-faction? The sub-faction is Bone Grins. Right. Bone Grins allows them to take Arrow Boys as battle line. Right. And it also gives them an extra shot with their arrows. Ah, so they're shootier. They're shootier. Okay. That's nice and straightforward. Yep. So, the general. Yep. Uh, Gulgaz Stoneclaw. He is a savage big boss. Uh, his command trait is Killer Instinct. So, a bit like the Gatebreaker Gargan, sixes to hit are a mortal wound in addition. Okay. And his artifact is the Lucky Bone. So once per phase, he can re-roll either a hit, a hit roll, a wound roll, or a save roll. Okay. Lucky bone. Okay, good stuff. Now, let's let's look at the other heroes as well. So that looks like a war dock. Yeah, we've got three war docks in okay. total. So war docks are wizards, but they've got an extra ability, which are war dancers. And instead of casting spells, they can do a dance instead. They've got three different dances. Do you have to pick the dance to start the game? No. Ah, right. No, so we can cover those when we get to it, then? Yes. Okay. But in short, one buffs spell casting, one gives um, a bonus to save rolls, and one gives a healing. It's healing. Okay. Do they have anything that has to be picked pre-game, like spells or anything? Only additional spells, yeah. They can have additional spells. Right, so what, what's the, what additional spells has this one got? Uh, that one has got... Uh, Gorka Morka's War Cry. So casting value of seven, seven inch range, pick an enemy unit, and it fights last. Right, okay. They get a bit uh, bit scared by the old Gorka Morka. Uh, the, the blood curdles and so on. Right, I'm looking for other. Oh, that's. Is that a. That's a Wardock. A Wardock? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he has got a different spell. He has got Power of the Werebore, casting value of six, 24 inches, wholly within. And you pick a friendly unit, and he gets plus one to run, plus one to charge, and plus one to hit rolls. But if they're under the power of the spell, they can't shoot. Right. 
Okay, that makes sense. And then this looks like another war dock over here. Yeah, he's basically a carbon copy of the first one. Ah, oh, right. He's got the the, the Gorka Morkas war cry. War cry. Yeah. Okay, and this has just reminded me of something that I have forgotten from the intro: realm rules. So this is the Siege of Excelsis. We are you. We are basically telling the story from the Kragnos book, which came out about this time in Second Ed, i.e., just before Third Ed came along. And it was some of the transition stuff. At the moment, they're going through all the Dawnbringers books. In fact, I think one of them has gone for pre-order today, in fact. In fact, I know it has, because I pre-ordered it earlier. Um, I digress. And in that book, there are rules for fighting in the realm of Gur for fighting this campaign. One is a realm spell called Wild Form. And it casts, any wizard can use it that's in the realm. It casts on a five, and it adds either plus two to run or plus two to charge or it might be plus one it's a bonus to run or charge we'll check that or i'll check that because having only just remembered it i haven't pre-checked this and then there is another rule that i can't remember the name of okay so the book has magically appeared next to me due to the uh the magic of editing slash pausing um so the rule is called the desolate wilds that basically means any destruction unit so this will apply to the ogres as well uh, they feel the um, the energy of Kragnos and Gorka Morka pulsing through the realm, and they get plus one move and plus one bravery. So the entire this army, plus one move, plus one bravery, and the ogres are a little bit braver as well because, yeah, they feel the uh, the call of the Great Moor, which is an aspect of Gorka Morka. Right. I think that's evident for the bone splitters, is it? We've got another character. We've got Maniac Weird Knob on the board. Ah, missed him. Right, okay. Maniac Weird Knob. Yeah, so he has got a built-in spell, which is Bone Spirit, and that gives friendly unit... You cast on a friendly unit, and they get plus one to wound rolls. Okay. And I've given him the additional spell, Glowy Green Tusks, and you cast that on a friendly unit, and the boars... Did you impact they damage? Rend, no, they get rend minus two. Ooh. For the attacks from the boars. with Because they've got glowy green tusks. That's right. Wow. Okay, anything else I've missed? Uh, oh, it's what the units one. are. Yes, what the units are. So. Savage Oryx with ten sa- 20 Savage Oryx with stickers. Yep. Uh, 20 uh, Savage Oryx more boys. Right, they're sort of like elite slash luna- lunar ticks. Yeah, so a bone splitter becomes a bone splitter when he takes a nasty smack on the head. These ones have had two nasty smacks on the head. And then we've got a unit of 20 arrow boys. Yep. We've got... Yay, big stabbers. Your very favourite. I do. i got... Yeah, big unit of four. Uh, another big unit of four. Uh, we've got two units of um, boar boy maniacs. Right, they're basically more boys on boars, aren't they? That's right. Yep. And then another unit of 20 arrow boys. Uh-huh. And then two units of regular savage oracle boar boys. The two units of five. So all these... Boars are units of five, are they, rather than... Yes. right? Oh, And that is 4,000 points. Okay, let's look at the defenders of Excelsis. Right, now let's look at the Stormcast Eternals first. Now, there's 2k of these guys. Um, and they are... This is quite an intermingled line. Over here, we have a nice encantor and some sequiturs. We have some decimators. We have justicar or judicate justicars with the bolt storm crossbows. Then we have a unit of fulminators on celestial draco lines. Evocators. Evocators on celestial draco lines. Damn it. Uh, a lord arcanum on celestial draco line. Then we have a unit of five retributor paladins. Yep. Then we have uh, five Liberators, five Protector Paladins, and two Fulminators, Fulminators, who are basically Protectors on uh, Dracots. So, whilst I remember, I will mention, even though they don't have the keyword, we are counting them as Paladins for the purposes of other rules, because they absolutely are Paladins on horseback the only reason they don't have the paladin keyword is so people who use them can retain friends but you know there's no love lost between these two uh (laughs) (laughs) 
So the uh, the general battle traits of the Stormcast. So um, there is always. Um, what, what's it called? No, no, the other one. The, when they explode Blazing and lightning, glory. Blaze of Glory. Thank you. Oh, well, my brain just switched off there. So when a Stormcast dies, it, I mean, a Stormcast is made out of azure lightning, and that lightning escapes and shoots back up to Azir and might fry things nearby. When a mon's removed as a casualty, you roll a number of dice equal to its wounds characteristic, and, and if for any six is rolled, an, uh, an enemy model within one inch takes a mortal wound. Then, as Joe rightly said, um, they're either a Stormkeep or they're a Stormwrought host. This is a Stormkeep force, and that means a couple of things. One, it means that any Cities of Sigmar units nearby get bonuses. There aren't any, so we'll, we'll skip over that. There are lots of free guilds guarding the walls, but not at this exact point. So we're skipping over that. The other is um, retribute redeemer units uh, count from in, in battle round one. Any objectives that are in their territory, redeemers count as three models for the purposes of holding them. From battle round three onwards. All objectives, they count as three models when holding. Also, if they are charged whilst they're on an objective, they might do mortal wounds to the unit that's charging. There are two such units, this unit of Liberators and this unit of Sequitus. I believe the Judicators are Redeemers as well. Are they? I, I, are I they so. really? No, 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 they're not, because Redeemer is the... Uh, the con I think it's Conclave's the word... And this is a, a, a just a car mm. conclave. Uh, so yeah, no, no, they don't. It's just the sequiturs and the these ones, the these ones, um, and they are sort of inside this. I forgot to mention at the start. This is meant to be. Uh, this is a, a sort of super cannon ballista that was being built up next to the wall, but had got nowhere near finished construction before Kragnos and these lads turned up. Uh, sub faction for the Stormcasts. It's the Knights Excelsior. Right, and they're the, the they're the super um, serious boys. Yeah, puritanical. Yeah, that's the word. They're very puritanical. They they don't like anything corrupt no. or even vaguely corrupt. Chaotic, corrupted. Nope, not for them. No, indeed. Um, and they get an ability called um, Storm of Annihilation. And that activates in the combat phase, doesn't it? it does. You you basically pick an enemy unit and then paladin unit. You pick a paladin unit that's going to attack it. Yep. And they get plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Yes, if the enemy unit is larger. Larger, right? Hence, lots of small units. Well, maybe hence, but plus they're extremely expensive. That yes, yes they are. They are yes. Okay, so I think that's. Have I missed any traits? Any Stormcast traits? No, they're all the base Stormcast traits. Okay. The, um... Oh, the other unit. Hang on. There is another unit in the army. It's that. But that starts off the table. That may or may not come hurtling down from the heavens at uh, at some future point. Right, who's your general? Okay, so the general is the Lord Arcanum on Celestial Draco. Okay. What are his traits? What's his command trait? Okay, so his command trait is skilled leader. So it's the, he's had to gather up several defenders to uh, repel this attack. So he's taken charge. Um, so during my command phase, I can roll a d6. And on a 5+, plus, he will get an additional command point to use in the defense of the city. Okay. Um, he, is that a generic one? That's or a generic that's one, That's a generic yeah. one, ah. um, He has a artifact of power. He is wearing Drake scale armor. Um, so what that means is, if he fails a saving throw against an attack that is damaged two or more, he gets to re-roll the saving throw. Um, <laughs> he has a, a spell called Azerite Halo. Uh, he has a spell called um, Azerite Halo, which has got an 18-inch range. It goes off on a 6. Um, and he picks a friendly Stormcast Eternal's unit. And if they make a saving throw of 6+, plus. Um, they will deal a mortal wound back to the enemy that we're targeting. Them. Okay. So it's um, it's guiding energy. It's uh, protecting them from uh, 
from any harm, hopefully, and reflecting it back. Um, his mount that he has, the Celestial Dracline itself, is a has a mount trait. It is swift. It has etheric swiftness. What that means is he can pile in an additional three inches, and he can choose to pile in and fight from six inches away. Okay. Um, he also has pack alpha, so he gets to reroll charges with the unit. Is that on his... That's on his war scroll. Yeah. On his war scroll. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I believe he can run and charge as well. <laughs> okay, all the war scroll stuff we'll, uh, we'll mention yep. where it starts to kick in. Okay. Any other spells or abilities people have had to take? Yes. So the knight in Cantor over there has a spell called Starfall. Uh, it has a 12-inch range, and it gets to pick a point visible within range. And um, for each enemy unit within three inches of that point, roll a dice, and on a three plus, that enemy unit cannot pile in. Okay. It sort of messes with their movement. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Okay, any other Stormcasty bits we've missed? Don't believe so. Those are the two characters. They're the ones that have fancy stuff. The rest is just on the War Scrolls. Okay, let's look at the Fire Slayers. Okay, so with the Fire Slayers, we have an Auric Runefather on um, Mandrodroth. Then we have uh, a unit of ten Halfguard Berserkers with Dual Axis. Uh, and n- near them, we have a Doom Seeker. Then we have um, Half Guard Berserkers. Did I just say Half Guard for them? You did. I did. I didn't mean that. But Volkite Berserkers. Uh, Volkite Berserkers. These are Half Guard Berserkers. They are basically the the sort of chosen warriors, like the retinue of the uh, Auric Rune Father. And then over here, we have another uh, ten. Volkite Berserkers, but these have Sling Shields and Fire Steel Axes. So, the um, the traits for the Fire Slayers, they have a couple of things. They have a special command ability called Fierce Counterattack. We'll come to that when it's relevant. They also have a heroic action they can use called Blaze of Fury. Again, we'll come to that when it's relevant. Um, now, they have the Urgold Runes rule. Now, that the short version of that is there's a list of special abilities and they can pick one a turn, uh, but they can only pick each one once. And there's a there's like a major and an enhanced there's a, there's a normal and an enhanced version of each one. When you pick the rune, everyone in the army, so every one of the fire slayers gets the basic version. If you and you roll a dice, if you get a six, they get the enhanced version as well. So like there's one that gives a ward save, I think. And extra attacks on another uh, extra one. attacks, yeah. So some of them they get better if you get the enhanced version. Now there are ar- there are artifacts and command traits and stuff that can make that easier to get, um, but I don't believe we have any of those in in this force. Now these guys, you the um, the lodge these are from <coughs> is Vostag. Vostag, that's the one. Okay, and what do they get for being Vostag? Uh, they get Fearsome Surge, so they get to add one to hit rolls and wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by Vostog Volkite Berserkers. These guys and those guys, when they charge. When they charge. Yeah, it's all about the charge. You've got a couple of armies here that are all about the charge. Yeah, everything wants to get stuck in. It does indeed. So, obviously, the Auric Rune Father is the general... Uh, what's his command trait? Okay, his command trait is Fury of the Fire Slayers. Um, so he's got an 18 inch um, command aura, and each Fire Slayer within 18 inches adds one to charge rolls, including himself. Right, okay. I believe the horns in these units add one to charge rolls as well, so these are going to get some charge roll buffs. But they need it because they got little yeah. legs. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, not so much. These guys, yeah, little legs. Uh, and he has an artifact of power. He has an artifact. It is his latch key is an axe of Grimnir, um, that gives it an additional rend and an additional damage. Doesn't that make it that axe like four damage? Four flat damage. Four flat key. damage. It's whopping. It's brutal. Yeah. And a mount trait. The mount trait from the Magbadroth is Coal Hearted Ancient. So. The uh, the darker that the um, the Magmadros get, the the older and more experienced they are. If I'm not, yeah, yeah, the, the, the more they start to cool down. Mm. 
So it starts to harden, so he gets minus one damage against melee attacks. So if he's being targeted with a two damage attack, it'll only do one damage to him. Nice. And I believe that is the mount traits, the command traits, and the artifact of power for the auric. It is. Uh, just mentioned briefly the uh, the doom seeker. Uh, short version: This is um, he's taken an oath to die in combat. When he gets damaged, he gets harder, and if you kill him, he gets to fight back before you take him off. That's the short version for what he is. He is a hero. He's a hero. Are you taking the mm. in Short. Don't tell him that. Yeah. I mean, compared to me, he's very short. I mean, an axe that size, could it really? I mean, there is a, an incident of Gotrek Gurnison attacking a great unclean one that's like 80 feet tall mm. with, with an axe in the face. That would be roughly equivalent, I guess. But then again, he's quite special. Moving on! Now we come to the Ogors. So, in terms of units, these are a bit more spread out. We have, here is the Tyrant. He is the general of the army. And near him, we have uh, a unit of four Iron Guts with a runic maw? A maw runic maw? That. This thing here. Then nearby, we have a unit of six Gluttons with um, combat weapon and Iron Fist. Then over here, we have the others. We have an, another unit of six Ogre Gluttons, but they have the two uh, the two weapons. And the then we have Lead Belchers. These are the shooty ones. They sort of fill these cannons full of shrapnel and then light the fuse and laugh a lot. In terms of um, battle traits, so the, 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 the generic... Ogre Moor Tribe traits, there's Ravenous Brutes. So an Ogre, at any given point in time, is either hungry or eating. If he is within three inches of the enemy, so if he's in combat, he's eating and he gets plus two bravery, because he's not going to run away whilst he's having a good snack. Oh no. And If he is hungry, he's hungry if he's more than three inches away from the enemy, in which case he gets plus two to to his move characteristics they get some they get a move of eight if they're not in combat basically and with, in addition with all of the uh, oh yeah we're, the, we're, yeah so they're gonna have they're gonna have a move of nine wow okay wow yeah <laughs> they really are so there's a few there's a few other rules here might makes right as opposed to mighty makes righty from that we can infer that the, the brains of the Ogors are slightly more literate than the brains of the Mega Gargans. So might makes right basically means a basic Ogor counts as two models. And a monster, which we don't have, a hero counts as five. So the tyrant's five, these guys are two. We then have trampling charge. When an Ogor unit completes charge, you roll a number of dice equal to the charge roll. So if you make a charge roll of, of eight, you're going to roll eight dice. Uh, and for each roll of a six, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. If the unit's got three or more models, um, you add one to the roll and uh, add two if it's a monster. So that's not going to be relevant, but units of three or more add one to the roll. So fives, they, they potentially chuck out some mortal wounds for these guys. They can be pretty nasty um the other um battle trait is gulping bites this applies to both units of gluttons if they are in combat within three inches of the enemy at the end of the hit the, the end of the combat phase um you roll a dice on a four plus that you, the enemy unit takes d3 mortal wounds as whilst they're still alive they try to eat them nice or the opposite of nice nice na Noisty, nasty. So anyway, so the um, the they are members of the uh, which more tribe are they? It's the Meat Fist More Tribe. Okay, so this is their sub faction. Yeah, so they have the fleshy stampede rule. So they get to add one to each roll made for the trampling charge. Right. So, so that'll be on five as, as a base, and a unit of three or more. It's on fours. fours. It's a lot of mortal wounds. But then again, there's a lot of wounds over there. Each of those Oryx is two wounds each. And there's... With a six-up ward. With a six-up ward. And there's 110 uh, wounds of Gargants. Yeah. Who can probably all heroically recover if they really want to. 
Uh, <laughs> oh. So, in terms, that's all the battle traits. The uh, enhancements for the tyrant. Okay, so the tyrant has an artifact power. He has a flask of stonehorn blood. <clears throat> so, once per battle, once per turn, once per game, sorry, he gets to drink it. And he will gain a ward of three plus thanks to drinking the blood of the Stonehorn. Yes. Um, he also has a killer reputation as his command trait. So what that means is um, ogres get a big name, which is uh, part of their reputation. Yeah. Uh, so like he might be like Gareth Bone Eater, and Bone Eater would be his big name. Yeah. However, this chap he, he has got such a fierce reputation. He has two big names. So he is the Death Cheater. And the Giant Breaker. So he's he's like Norman Death Cheater Giant Breaker. Maybe we should find a name that isn't Norman, Norman. and stick to it. Um, but it isn't. There isn't one in the book. It was easy with the other ones. They've got names in the book. This guy doesn't have a name. Sorry, I'm not at all fraught. How it translates to, to rules purposes, he has a ward of 5+. plus. Is that Death Cheater? That is Death Cheater. Okay. And Giant Breaker, he adds plus 1 to damage versus monsters. Ah. And that, ladies and gentlefolk, are the armies. Yeah. So, we now need to have a sedative and st- start turn 1. Hey! Okay, so here we are, almost at the start of the battle round. The Bone Splitters have surged forward We're using their special rule called... Tireless Trackers. Tireless Trackers. We have... Basically, all these five units have tirelessly tracked, as have some of these more ball, ball boys. Ball boy maniacs. Ball boy maniacs. And these ball boys over here, they have all tirelessly tracked. Now we come to the priority roll. This is going to be interesting. Good luck, gentlemen. Good luck, sir. Good luck. That's a five yes. and, and a six. Do the forces of destruction wish to go first or second, sir? Or, or do you require time to think? Well, I wish them to go second. Whether or not that's what they want is a different matter, but I think I want the uh, the defenders to start... That you want them to get closer to you first. Yeah. yeah. So as the wall has come down, the defending line surges forward to meet the enemy. It's the forces of order, kind of. Turn one. Okay, we're midpoint in the hero phase. So, to start with, the Fire Slayers have chosen the Urgold Rune of... Relentless zeal. Relentless zeal, which gives them plus two movement. We've rolled four. They don't have the enhanced version, so they all have plus two movement this turn uh heroic action um from the auric room father the auric, thank you the auric room father has been heroic leadership from which he generated a command point the uh stormcast general the lord arcanum inspiring leader, inspiring leader he has created another command point with a uh, by rolling a five plus of course we did say there's gonna be two heroic actions yep Rather than just the one. Do you know what the second is? I don't believe there's a relevant heroic action at the moment. Right, okie doke. Over here on the destruction side, the Beast Smasher Mega Gargant has tried to create a... Uh, has tried heroic leadership, but he, there's no one for him to lead. He's just gone, do this! And then look around and gone, oh, right, okay. So, no, he, he, he rolled a two. Okay, now we come to spellcasting. The Evocators of Celestial Dragon Lines are going to attempt Empower. Yep, it goes off on a five. That's a three and a six. That's a nine. So that goes off. There is no one close enough to unbind. Uh, so that Empower has happened. The Lord Arcanum. Mystic Shield. On a five. On the Evocators. You don't need to say who until you cast it, which you have on an eight. Okay. So on, on the Evocators. And then the Knight in Cantor is going to attempt Mystic Shield also. Goes off on a five. How did you measure for denial over here for unbinding? Yeah, yeah okay, still out of range. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all your spell casting. It is. Okay. Uh, I think that's your hero phase. It pretty much is, I believe. Okay, so just as a note, whilst I remember, we've changed the colours of the objectives depending on who's controlling them. So those two currently being controlled by the forces of destruction. These two currently being controlled by the forces of order. Uh, and friends. 
So, at the end of the movement phase, the line of order-ish has surged forward right the way across. So, going from left to right, these ogre gluttons, they, did they run or move? They moved. They moved. The sequiturs. Moved. The knight and cantor. Moved. Those decimators, they most definitely ran. Yep. They, there, was lot, there were lots of sixes and a couple of command points uh, spent on uh, full march. The lead belchers moved to try and shoot, but they ha- are out of range. The judicators also moved, and the front rank are going to be in range of at least those... Ball boy maniacs. Ball, 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 but those. The, the ball boy maniacs. The evocators have moved... And uh, these retributors have run to try and shore up this flank. I think there was Joe concluded there's a lot over here. Maybe they should go that way. Now there's some space. The evocators have moved up. These fire slayers ran. These ogres ran an amazing <coughs> excuse me, 15 inches. They're awfully keen and hungry. They can feel the power of Gorka Morka surging through them. The tyrant slightly less, but he obviously also did run. The half guard berserkers ran. The Mag- or room father on Magmadroth did not. He just moved and is definitely in range to use the flame attack that the Magmadroth has. Whether or not they'll be wanted to f- f- charge afterwards, don't know. Uh, then over here, everyone uh, ran. Uh, as well, the Fulminators, the Protectors, the Liberators, the Volkite Berserkers. Lots of running. So, where are we going to start with the shooting, sir? So the Auric Runefather on the Magma Droth yes. is going to breathe fire on this unit of Auric's over This here. unit, the, on the, uh, the Arrow Boys? Yes. So, okay, so this is... Um, one attack for every model of the target unit to a max of 10. Yep. So that's 10 attacks hitting on twos. Wounding on threes. That's six. Six, six ward, rend of one, no armor anyway. Uh, six ward saves of six plus. Non passed, six wounds taken, three dead Oryx. So now the Judicators are firing. They are all out attacking. They're firing at the more boys. Ball boy maniacs. Ball boy maniacs. I'll get it eventually, probably by the time we finish, uh, who are all out defensing. Okay, so first we have the Bolt Storm crossbows, which hit on twos with... Because all out attack. The all out attack. Each hit is two hits. So that's 12 hits from six shots. What a time to be alive. Winning on threes. So nine saves, uh, base of six, fives with all out defense. Then a ward save of six. Only one five there, so the rest. You want a fistful of sixes here? Please. One. One, okay, so that's. What's that, eight? Eight? No, I can't count. Seven. Two, two dead so and one wounded. Seven damage taken from that. Now you have another weapon in the unit, don't you, sir? Yes, the prime at the front here has a Thunderbolt crossbow. Which is three attacks, hitting on twos. Because of all that attack. Yep, yep. So that's three hits. And then wounding on threes. That's two wounds. Rend two, damage two. Okay, so the rend two goes completely bypasses your save. Uh, so that's four ward saves. With six plus. Which I can one? see one. Yep. So three more damage. That's ten in total. Yeah, so... Three dead and one wounded. I was going to say, how many wounds do they have? They have three each. So three dead and one wounded. Goodness me. So only two of the boar boy maniacs remaining. Okay, over here, the Auric Runefather is going to pile in. So he needs a nine-inch charge to... uh, Well, well, he needs to roll. Let's see how far he gets. Nine will get him into here. That's a nine. Uh Uh-oh. It started, James. Okay, there was some debate about whether to unleash hell from the Arrow Boys, but at the end of the the uh, the charge, there are not that many that can see. So the command point being saved. Right, monstrous rampage, and Joe. Well, the Magmadroth is going to roar yeah, at these um, uh, savage. Sa- what are they called? 
Savage Oryx. Savage Oryx. Yeah. So it's going to rear up, roar, and the Rune Father is going to shout, what is it? Fire and gold! God. No, blood and gold. Blood and gold. Okay, so on a three plus? No. Or is it a two plus? It's a three plus. <laughs> it's a three. Cool. Very much a three plus. Okay. Um, right, you have to pick a unit to fight first. I'm going to pick the uh, the Magma Drop. And the, the Aura Rune Father. They're going to fight first, yes. aren't they? So okay. The Blazing Moor from the, um, the Magma Drop. You're all out defending. I'm You're all out defending. And I will all ask that. Well. Okay. So yeah, we we pos- we've just we've, we've come to a realization we've possibly overcooked the command points. We might be changing that from turn two. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to be threes to hit with the blazing moor. That's two hits, wounding on twos. At uh, rend two. Uh, so so damage a d three each. I do get a save. You oh. do- yeah, because oh. they're, they're five plus naturally. They're all out defense. Ah, defense. So they, have they have shields. Five plus. So we get. Three sixes to save. Was it three or two? It was, it was three, I believe. I, we were no, just it was two. two. It was two. So neither saves. No. Then right. Four damage, and then four wards of six. No, no, two orcs. And then it will be the claws and horns, which is going to be hitting on twos. Accounting for all that attack. All that attack. So that's four, four hits. hits. Um, wounding on threes. Um, oh no, sorry. Yeah, wounding on threes. Uh, one. Just the one, uh, rend one. So save a five plus. And no. Uh, two damage. Two ward saves. You, you do one of these. Nope. Nope, another dead Auric. And now the Auric Father himself with his latch key, which is the relic, hitting on twos. Four hits. There you go. There Good you use go. of all that attack there. And now threes to wound. Three wounds. Four wounds. Four wounds. Sorry. Four wounds at rend. Rend what? Rend two. Rend two. That's because of your artifact. Your yes. artifact. Yeah. Sixes. Got one. one. You got one. Really? You got one. Which is a good job because how many damage are these, Joe? Four damage each. Four damage each. Three base plus one for the artifact. So that's twelve ward saves of six plus. Ow! He is not messing around, is he? Ow! Two. So ten damage taken on top of the six already. Sixteen, that's eight dead Oryx. Mm -hmm. But it's their turn now. Right, after piling in, there are eleven out of the twelve that are in range with the savage stickers. Two inch range, two attacks each, fours to hit, fours to wound... No rend. So 23 attacks in total. Sixes are two hits. Of course, because bone splitters. And three sixes to hit are three extra wound um, hits because of the spirit of Gorka Morka. Fours to wound. Six four plus saves required. Okay, three saved, three fail. The Magmadroth has molten blood. So any successful wounds in melee, it spews out and does mortal wounds on a 4+. plus. No. Maybe it just sort of like... So it's, well, he's older, he's got, yeah. colder, it's, 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 it's got a lot colder as, he, as he's got older. So three damage taken. And at the end of combat, the Magma Droth's lashing tail will strike out at all units within three inches. You roll the dice, if it's equal to or under the number of models... In that unit, they take D3 wounds. So they take D3 wounds. Two. Two, as that slashy, spiky tail lashes out. Come on, double ward save. Ooh, oh, yeah. ward save and a half. One of them sort of been half impaled on a tail spike. So now we come to the battle shock phase. These savage Oryx have lost nine. Uh, and... Uh, the inspiring presence of the unit champion is going to stop them from running. So command point taken there, auto pass. Right, two of the units have lost some Uruks. Um, what are we doing? So the Arrow Boys, they've lost three. Yeah. So the bravery is six, plus one for the banner, plus one for the realm. Is their, total of... their bravery is five, plus one for the banner is six, plus one for the, the realm. realm is seven. Seven. Okay, so... Ooh. So six plus three is nine. Bravery Eight. seven, two run away. Or two probably succumb to uh, some wounds sustained earlier. Or they get stunned on by the clumsy gargant stood right next to them. Yeah, that. 
Those two. Those two <laughs> dead. <laughs> right. What we happen? What we're doing here? Are th- so they need to roll as well. They are bravery six plus one for the banner plus one for the realm makes them bravery eight. They lost three as well, so they need anything but a six. So now's the time to roll the sixes. So the injured one. Uh, maybe the boar gets spooked and runs off in a random direction and like clatters into a load of barrels. And the Oruk has been... He's now had three blows to the head. So at the end of the turn, the forces of order-ish will contain uh, hold that objective for a point. They'll hold the objective by the market over here for another point. This one, however... Uh, has multiple units from each side on it. The monster, the Magmadroth, counts as five. However, there are a total of seven Uruks within range of the objective. So that is still held by the forces of destruction. So at the end of their turn, the forces of order-ish get two points as we go on to the forces of destruction, turn one. So, mid-hero phase, the war stomper. Uh, it's his finest hour. I think he is going to go and get stuck in with something. The um, the Forge Father, the Auric Forge Father. It's his finest hour as well. He's he. I'm afraid our our, our little magmic friend has gone and done something rather rash. Um, so it's, so it's his finest hour as well because you know he needs it. Uh, then the. Uh, Beast Smasher attempted her leadership again. Still no one to lead. He didn't get it. And the Knight in Cantor attempted it also, but also failed. So that's heroic actions. Right, now we come on to spells and such. This War Doc is going to do the Glyph Doc dance instead of casting a spell. And on a 3+, plus. Yep. on a 3+, plus. Then a pick a unit holding the twelve, and they get plus one to save. You're picking the unit that's fighting the magma droth. Yes. Good choice, sir. Good choice. Then the next war doc, mad doc, war, war doc, war doc. Sorry, it's only been ten seconds. The next war doc is going to attempt to cast a mystic shield on a five plus. Cast on a nine. There are a number of wizards within denial uh, unbinding range. Okay, I will attempt with which to, unit? Um, with the uh, encanto, nice encanto. With the nice encanto. Okay, you need ten or more, which no. you do not get. So mystic shield going on these boar boy maniacs. A slight correction. We measured again, a couple of inches out. So it was the evocators that attempted the denial. So this guy is going to do the glyphstock dance on a three plus. So, unit holding with the 12. Those ball boys. Those ball boys are going to get a plus one to save. One. Then the weird... Maniac. Ma- weird the, 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 the <laughs> maniac. Literally five seconds ago. Not even yeah. that. Yeah. The <laughs> maniac weird knob is going to attempt the curse of the wereboar. No, glowy green tusks. The glowy green tusks. This goes off on a five. I could, that's, that's a, a four. four. I could have sworn you said Curse of the Werebore. No, he said Curse of the Werebore, and I corrected him as well. I said Glowy Green Tussle, how you doing? <laughs> Let's fight about it. Ah! <laughs> and then a command point being spent over here on Rally for these Arrow Boys. Five have gone. Are they going to be ordered back to their feet? Is the Spirit of Gorka one? One of them. The Spirit of Gorka Morka has not left their bones. And he's going to come back and then move. Well, they're all going to move because it's now the movement phase. Okay, at the end of the movement phase, it looks like this. Now, the simplest thing to do is say that the war dock ran. Everyone else just moved. So, over here, we have the two units of boar boys. The two units of boar boys eyeing up a charge over here, I guess. I mean, ow. But then again, we were just commenting that looking along the line, there's no there's no choice targets to charge because everything is hard as nails. But you know, mega gargants. So the boar boys uh, pu- pushing forward, eyeing up a charge. The um, the beast smasher gargant is holding back a little bit. I reckon he's investigating one of these barrels. So they're maybe sort of punching a hole in and starting to drink what's inside. Maybe they maybe they've got mead or something. Uh, the gate breaker. Yep. 
the gay break. It's 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 the words smashing and stomping and breaking. They are all kind of interchangeable, so I get a little a little bit confuzzled. It feels like there's a theme going, isn't it? Oh well, yes, the gate breaker has moved forward. He has got uh, targets to go for if he wants to, like those evocators. But they do they do nasty nasty lightning damage in in combat. So ugh. this uh, boy bo- boy maniac. Boy, boy, man. Yeah, you see, James is nodding at me off camera. It's uh, it's awfully decent, obviously. The poor boy maniac either doesn't know he's uh, he's dead, his, or his mates are all dead, or the fur's like totally sticking out on the boar after being electrocuted by all those lightning crossbows, and he has gone forward. Over here, we had a bit of uh, doodah shenanigans. So we had the arrow boys all line up to be able to shoot at the. Um, the half guard berserkers who where were where my finger is pointing but then as the war stomper approached to come and smack at the uh the magma droth they went within range of them and they redeployed trying to hook that building however they have not rolled enough to be completely invisible so this one guy that one that one little dude there is going to get the entire unit murdered <laughs> because because they rolled a four not a five it's your fault <clears throat> on, the Derek. Bright, on the bright side, you still get a cover save if that's going to help. Yeah, well, and uh, and then Joe had the realization: why, why didn't I redeploy them forward to get them in range of the the uh, the, the Auric Rune Father so they all got their ward save? But coulda, woulda, shoulda, didn't I? Right, the war stomp has come over here to warringly stomp, although he can't stomp the Magma Droth, and then the uh, the Maniacs. Maniacs? More boys. More, the more boys. They're the unit and that you actually, you've been, they are the unit that are the more boys that you've been calling everything else more boys. Splendid. What's well, because there's lots of them. There's always more boys. There's more, more boys. And then Stoneclaw himself, or is it Rockclaw? Stoneclaw. Stoneclaw himself running through. I think he's leaving, for some reason, those um, those Savage Oryx to deal with that Magma Droth. He's spying another prey, I reckon, coming through the gap. Don't know where he's going to end up. But, yeah, it's a thing. Right, so that's what's happened when everything's moved. And I just just look at that view. I think it's a thing of beauty. Okay, shooting phase. Only a few units to go through. So these arrow boys, the f- front four, can have range on those ogre gluttons. So they're going to shoot paraborical... Para- that's easy for you to say. The firing over the heads of the boar boys. Is it two shots each? Three, three shots each. Three shots each. Twelve shots hitting on... Fives. Fives. Because they have bone grins, so they get extra shots. Okay, four hits. I need to double check if sixes explode in ranged as well as melee. So if you can see in the distance, this unit has a tribal banner with a lookout knobla. There's basically a grot in a crow's nest going, Look out, boss! Which means it's minus one to wound for ranged attacks. So, wood wound on four is going to wound on fives. What? One wound. That saved you two wounds. Excellent. Their save is... Five plus. Five plus. One save at five plus. Ow! Takes a wound. Now, the gatebreaker is going to attack with his hurled boulder. Basically, I think he's just going to snap a bit off this house and lob it at these decimators. Now, there is a prime in that unit, which means the idiots with flags rule is going to come into effect. So, they, ordinarily, he's hitting on... Three plus. Three plus. Now he's hitting on... Two plus. Two plus. One attack. Because the idiot's got a flag. Hits. Hits. Wounds on a two plus. Because the idiot's got a flag? No, just naturally Just hits naturally wounds on a two plus. Yep. Minus three rend. Uh, okay. So they've got Mystic Shield. So they do indeed. Two plus. So it's going to be a five plus save. That's a six. six it is go. saved. That's, that was a four damage attack. So that has saved the life of a paladin. Now we come to the Arrow Boys. Three of them can't see a single Dwardin because the Dwardin are hugging that building. But yeah, a bunch was... of them on this side can see a few. So the three that can't see are going to shoot at the, the, the rear of the Magma Droth. You are all out attacking the units, aren't you? Yeah. So you're hitting on threes. Fours. Fours. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, so fours to hit. That's three hits. Six hits, even. Six. Wounding on fours? Yep. 
That is five wounds. Okay. Better than your average, because your average is really low. Yeah. That's three so plus. Three plus gets his finest Fine hour. Okay, oh, and and his finest hour has saved two of them. Yes, they're stuck in scales and haven't hit anything underneath. Okay, now there is another buttload firing at the Auric Hearthguard. And the Auric Hearthguard are all out defending. They're, they're hugging that building. Some of these arrows flying straight, some of them going parabor... Para, yeah, the, the War Stomper, probably not too impressed with the arrows flying past his face. 39 attacks, hitting on fours. 17 hits, winning on fours. So six saves required of four plus because of our defense. Okay, two fail. So the guy who stuck his head out is Jam Bread. Now we're in the charge phase. The War Stomper is charging. 2d6. Makes a nine. Right, the War Stomper has crushing charge. After he's charged, roll a dice. Uh, on a 2 plus, he hits and, and charges into a nearby unit. 2 plus. 2, okay. Uh, a monster that receives a crushing charge will take D6 mortal wounds. Six. For 6. Ow! And the gatebreaker charges. 10. He has the same impact rule, so on a 2 plus, he will do. Nothing. 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 Maybe he smashed into the buildings by mistake. Get wedged between them. Okay, where are we going next? Is it the, the lone, the lone boy, 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 maniac. boy maniac? He's a four or something. Well, an 11 does the job. And he ends up here. And as he charges in, the lead belchers with a, with a grin and thinking of roast boar, they unleash hell. There's D3 shots each. So for two, four, five. Right, minus one to hit because it's unleashing hell. Yep. So it's going to be fives to hit. Two hits. Uh huh. And then it will be threes to wound. One wound. One wound. Rend? Rend one. So I don't get saved. Damage one. Damage one. Okay, six at ward. Yep. No, takes a point of damage. Has two wounds remaining. Now these boar boys. Get a six, which is enough. They have a drummer, which gives them an extra plus one. They end up here. Now these boar boys. That's, that's that's not a that no no. They are going nowhere. And I think that's it for charges. Yep. Okay, monstrous rampages. Both the war stomper and the magma Droth are titanic dueling. So they're gonna get plus one to hit each other. This is going to be a titanic duel. Both literally and figuratively. And the gate crusher... Breaker. Breaker. Damn it. The gate breaker is going to roar at the evocator to see if he can cow the celestial draco lines on a 3+. Yes. He does. No command points. May, no orders may be received by that... But may be issued by or received by that unit in the following combat phase. Speaking of which... Okay, James elected to start with the War Stomper attacking the Magma Droth. So first off is his Death Grip. For those of you who've seen it, one of my very, very, very favourite films of all time is Flight of Dragons by Peter Dickinson. This very much reminds me of the scene where the ogre picks up the dragon and squeezes it. Hits on a two because of all-out attack. Only one attack. Two. Two. Sorry, not all-out attack because of Titanic Duel. Titanic yes, Duel. of course. Wounds on a two, because that's what it does. Yep. Okay, now it's Rendev. Minus two. So, it's your finest hour, so it's three it plus. Is. Are you all out defending or anything as well? No, 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 no. Okay, so minus two so is a five plus. Five. Which saves. He bats his hand away. Bats his hand away with his latch key, which is just as well, because that would be 2d6, pick the highest damage. So he's now going to jump up and down in anger. <laughs> oh! Yeah, just just putting it out there. The Gatebreaker gets an almighty stomp. The Beast Smasher gets an almighty stomp. The War Stomper does not get an almighty stomp. He, he just gets, gets an a... almighty jump. <laughs> like a huge toddler. Yeah. Right, how many attacks? Uh, four. 
Four. Hitting on twos because of everything. Okay. Four hits. Wounded on twos because of finest hour. Three, three. Red. minus two. So three saves of five plus. Okay, two go through. D3 damage. For three. Three damage. Ah! Uh, oh! Oh, yeah! He's minus one damage. He is minus one damage. So... He'll take two. He'll take two. All of the stuff that hit him last turn was all single damage. That's fine. The impact hits with mortal wounds. That's fine. But that was... Was it 1d3 or 2d3 then? 2d3. 2d3. So it was a two and a one. Yeah. The what? Two ones. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, and then the magma, magma blood... Um, so you forgot to do it on the impact hits as well. No, it's only in melee weapons. It's only in melee weapons. Yeah. Right, okay. So did you take two or three damage? I don't two. Know take two. So I'll roll. Four pluses. So two mortal wounds back on the war stomper. Yeah. As he bleeds on him. And, and James has got some kind of plastic voodoo, which is keeping score of very high numbers of the uh, of the giant's damage. I will... Uh, I haven't got the brain power to understand how that works. We just sort of take that on faith. Right. Titanic Boulder Club is equal to... Number of attacks equal to the number of models within three inches. Plus four if a model is a monster. So that's five. And then plus f the number on his Titanic Boulder Club profile, which in his current damage level is four. So even though there's only one model... So one attack goes up to nine. Yeah. Nine attacks hitting on twos with that Titanic Boulder Club. So, seven hits. Wounding on twos because Titanic Jewel. Uh, because okay. Finest Hour. Finest Hour. Seven saves. What's the rend? Minus two. Minus two. Seven saves is five plus. Okay, I can see one, two, three fail. Four fails. Two damage each. So Eight. One damage each. One damage each for four. Damn. So he's taken ten, now he's taken fourteen. He starts with sixteen, I believe. Yep, but then the Magma Blood? Yep. One mortal wound back against the uh, the war stomper, and after about five minutes of furiously rereading the page, this is sad James who can't find another attack with which to try and kill the magma drop. This is Smug Joe who gets to fight back in a moment. Anyway, speaking of J Smug Joe, it's your turn to activate a unit. Where are you gonna go? Um. I think it's going to be the Evocators, but I just want to double check something. Okay. So, indeed, the Evocators pile in. We've got three into base to base. The Gargant is all out defending, swinging that club wildly in an arc, a defensive arc. Well, just in an arc. It's going to smash through that building. They're going to have to duck and be discommoded and maybe miss an attack or something. And it slams into that building. Right, with swords and staves. Hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. Ten hits. Wounding on twos because they have Empower cast on them earlier. Okay, so ten wounds. Uh, rend one, but with all that defence. Goes back. So fours become fives become fours. Or fours become three become fours. Either way, it's fours. Okay, how many get through? Is that four? Five. Five. One damage, two damage? One damage each. One damage. That's five damage taken by the Gatebreaker. Now the Celestial Dracoline. So they normally have three attacks each. However, the Pack Alpha is within 18 inches of them, so they're going to get four attacks. Hitting on threes. Eight hits. Wounding on twos because of Empower. Eight wounds. What's the rend? Rend of one. One. So four plus saves. Are they one damage? They are two damage. Two damage. Saves are four plus. Okay, that looks like three fails. Three fails. That's, yeah, so six damage taken. So he's taken 11 damage from the three evocators. <whistles> then after they have fought for the first time... Uh, the Celestial Lightning Arc ability kicks in. I can I can remember about 30 dead rats that uh, <laughs> that discovered this the hard way last time I went up against these guys. Uh, so you roll three dice for each model in the unit, then pick an enemy unit within three inches, or was it one inch? Either way, it's, it's the Gargant, 
and then roll that number of dice for each four plus to mortal wound. That is 18 dice mortal wounding on fours. There we go, 18 dice. So he has taken a total of 21 damage. We caught the fact that the Dracolines are D3 damage, not 2. So we rolled off camera and then the damage went up. He's taken 21 damage. And Joe just, just said, does that bracket him? We're like, do you reckon? I'd be disappointed if it didn't. Now we're coming back to this unit of Savage Uruks. They are all out attacking. And after piling in, they are all in for a total of 25 attacks, hitting on threes. We've resorted to the dice bucket. And with the spirit of Gorka Morka rule, the exploding sixes will give 18 hits in total, wounding on fours. Eight saves required. It's his finest hour still, so three pluses. Two wounds remaining. That gets him. Boy, does that get him. So, okay, so magmatic blood. He one. One mortal with there was one guy. More oh. save? Oh, yeah. Six. Oh, close, but no cigar. He's dragged down. And you are a general down. We have a, gen a magma drop down. Right, now Joe's activating the decimators. They have five attacks each, plus one for the prime. Their special rule does not kick in because they are not outnumbered. 26 attacks hitting on... I'm going to say twos because I'm going to give my last command point to all out attack. I all out attack, okay. 22 hits, winning on threes. So that's 13 at Ren 2. Five plus saves and no saves. We're on to wards of six plus for war paint. Have you made a single one of those? No. Must try harder. Okay, the boss remaining having taken one point of damage. Now this boar boy maniac is going to activate and attack the Judicators with his many attacks. So he gets four attacks with his chomper. Three usually, but plus one because he charged. Uh, hitting on fours. One. <laughs> Wounding on threes. Nothing. No. The boar? The boar gets three attacks. Hitting on threes because it charged. One. One. Wounding on threes. Nothing. Nothing. I mean, he has definitely been electrocuted many times, but... Ugh. Okay, now the lead belchers have activated and are attempting to club that orc to death with their cannons. Two attacks each? Yep. So Hitting on... Threes. Three hits. Wounding on... Threes. Two wounds. Rend? No rend. No rend. Saves of five plus. Six. Because I haven't got a shield. Ah, six. One. Make one. And two damage. then two damage ward, two ward saves then. Yeah, one he's pass, got one, one fail. Left. He's got a wound left. How is he alive? Then over here, the remaining boar boy failed to do any they he did a lot of wounds, but they passed all their two up saves because of Mystic Shield. Then the Judicators uh, gladiest the one last one wound off that boar and uh mm, num 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 lead belches mmm boar so they're eating it um now we come to the gate breaker and his first weapon uh, is his fort crusher flail right so he gets, that thing yeah he only gets five attacks on his current profile because of wounds taken uh, and is that the only degrading for this weapon yes it's the only thing that degrades okay so six is to hit a d3 mortal wounds in addition Six is to hit a D3 in addition. Got it. Yep. And it's ordinarily hitting on fours, but because there's a champion in there, he's, a, he's an idiot with a flag, flag so I'm hitting on threes. threes. Okay. Well, that's D3 mortal wounds in addition, and that's a typical James roll. Okay. Well, that, that takes the sting off in a little. Yeah. Wounding on threes. One, One wound, wound. Minus three. Uh, so one save of six plus. Five save because of Mystic Shield on them. No, they have empower on them. They can't have two. Sp oh, they can have two spells, but the, they didn't. The, the Knight Arcanum cast Mystic Shield on them. Did he? Yep. All right. I'm so five up. Up. No. Four okay. Damage. So that's seven in total with mortal wounds. Was it okay. D three? Did you roll it? No, it's not D three. Oh, it's, sorry. It's no, three. No. Yeah. You're quite right. It's two for two. It's a six. Okay. So and splat's one of them. And then blaze of glory. 
Just two mortal wounds in return. Oh, of course. And now we have Death Grip. He's going to pick one up and squeeze him. So hits on a two. Hits. Wounds on a two. Why does it hit on a two? Is that his basic profile? No, because it wounds on a two. So yes, because it's a basic profile. But it says... Sorry, I was being confused. I forgot about idiots with flags. Okay, render two. So a one is definitely a fail. Uh, D6 damage. For four. For four. One takes attack, kills another one. Yep, so then Blaze of Glory. That's five dice rather than Ooh, the. F five Which is right, yes, of course, sorry. He's only just taken four wounds, that's why I was getting confused. So one more mortal wound. Right, then we have Almighty Stomp. Yep, which is two attacks, hitting on a two because of Idiots with Flags. Two hits. Wounding on threes. Two, two wounds. wounds. Ren minus two. And uh, the six definitely passes. Yep. And then just four. I think the four fails. The four fails. Yes, it's so it's three plus save. Plus uh, one minus one. No, plus one plus, minus two. Pl minus what? two. So that's a pass. Three plus becomes two plus for yes. Mystic Shield. Yeah. Minus two. Four is a pass, pass. then. Yeah. Okay. Any other nope. weapons? Nope. So battle shock time. The only test we think. Because these guys can't fail, the Eva cases, is the Boar Boy. Uh, lost four plus D6. It's four plus four is eight. So, yes, he runs away. Uh, bravery is six. Plus one for the realm is seven. So, he does, uh, well, probably get hacked to death. And at the end of the turn, the forces of destruction score two points. One for holding that objective, and one for holding. What's it gone? Is it under the. It's somewhere. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's under the war stomper. So at the end of battle round one, the scores are tied. Let's roll for priority for battle round two. Right, best of luck. One. Four. Do you want the first turn or the second turn? What, you want the first turn? Not the second turn. Okay. It's destruction, turn two. So, hero phase stuff. The War Stomper attempted heroic recovery, but he failed. They're, they're not very brave, and he did not heroically recover. The Gatebreaker, it's his finest hour, so he's going to have to point to save, which, you know, might be helpful. The Lord Arcanum has successfully generated, is, is heroically leading the Eva cases, and has gained a command point. The Tyrant is heroically leading his. Uh, his Ogors, and has also gained a command point. Now we have spells and the like. Mm -hmm. So where are we going first? This Wardock. This Wardock, yep. He's going to try and cast Mystic Shield. Okay, you need a five. That's, That's an eleven. Are you going to attempt to try and um, unbind that? No. So we're going to cast that on the Savage Oryx. The ones at the front? Yes, with the stickers. Okie dokie. Now, uh, where are we next? Going to go this war dock. Yeah. It's going to do the glyph dock dance. So on a three plus. Nope. Nope. Nothing happens. And the maniac weird knob. On the boar, yep. Yeah. yeah. Is going to try and cast glowy green tusks on a five. Which goes off on a ten. Are you going to attempt to unbind that, Joe? The knight arcanum is going to unravel her void. The knight in cantor. The knight in cantor. Yeah. What did I say? Arcanum. Oh, Night in Cantor. They, they, they won't be invented for a little while. Okay. Um, unravel her Void Storm scroll and automatically unbind a spell once per game. He's doing it again. Yeah. 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 He's using his stats. Yeah. How very dare he. And then... This guy? That guy is going to do Curse of the Werebore. Okay. Which, I can't remember who goes off. The card is in front of you. But it's definitely that. It's definitely that. Okay, where's it going on? Uh, it's going to go on... Those piggies over there. Okay. What's that do? Uh, plus one to run, plus one to charge, plus one to hit rolls. Okay. Good stuff. Are you going to check for denial range, Joe? Yeah, uh, I'm binding. Out of range by the looks of it. Well, try the evocator. The evocator. Good point. Yeah, you're in. Cool. I what you rolled seven? You need eight seven. or more to unbind. Eight or more. Yep. It's unbounded. 
Okay, anything else to do in the hero phase? No. You're not going to attempt to rally those savage aurochs? I suppose it's good, yeah. When it broke. Okay, nine die, so on sixes they come back. They rejoin the fight. One. So, at the end of the movement phase, uh, so starting on the right, nothing has run. So, this makes this a little easier. So, these, uh, these savage Uruks have surged forward, spooked the boars a little bit, who have backed off to behind these barrels. Their riders chafing at their... Um, they're going backwards-ness. Then in the centre, these boars, uh, their riders have very prudently moved out the way of the Beast Smasher Mega Gargant. Look, it's the size of the biggest building. Second biggest building on the table. Then the big stickers following up behind and the War Dock. The Gates Breaker... It breaks multiple gates. Gates. Breaker. Staying where he is. Obviously there is some uh, smashing to be done. Then in the... And over on this side. the um, This unit of Savage Uruks is surging over here to uh, try and attack and tie up the Fulminators. However... Uh, they 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 were cautious about what was in the building. They skirted around it. However, Mr. War Stomper here has just blundered around and went within nine inches of the protectors and they redeployed forward, getting a big fat six on the dice. So they're going to bring themselves into play there. And with their range of three inches on those swords, there's going to be a number of them in effect. The, uh, the, the challenge here is the Uruks need to bring their numbers to bear. And they need to mainly focus on the Dwarden and the Ogors because none of the Uruks, apart from the Savage Stickers, have any rend. And there are lots of Stormcast with Mystic Shields, all out defence. There's a the Stormcasts are surviving well. So it's a case of trying to line up the right units to fight the right units. That being said, this War Stomper looks like he's going after those Dwarden. Because those Dwarden are nasty. Uh, and they're probably a little bit annoyed that their lord is now dead, especially given they ducked back behind that building to try and hide from the rain of arrows. So they might be feeling some shame at this moment in time. But maybe he ordered them to do it. Can't remember. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, that. And these have moved up as a... The war dock sensing that there is a... Um, a sort of second wave going to be required and holding these ones back slightly. It's all degrees when it comes to holding back Uruks. You can sort of get them to pause momentarily until they they sort of get the itch, then they're off, regardless of what their bosses say. But they can be held back for a time with the by the Uruks with slightly cooler heads. The Arab boys... Did they move? They did. They did. Yeah, they've moved here, presumably to line up on the either the dwarves, the dwarven, or the ogors. That's the movement. It is. Yeah. yeah. Shooting. There is shooting. There's a couple of Arab boys, and there's a giant boulder to lob. There is. Yeah. And we're starting over here with the Arab boys into those uh, those ogre gluttons. Now, because of the lookout knobler, like, look out, boss! They're going to be minus one to wound. The Ogors are all out defending. They are taking cover from the hail of arrows that are blotting out the sun. Uh, 15 in range, 45 shots. Hitting on fives, wounded on fives. They'll be fighting in the shade. Right, they will indeed. Get gold. 11 hits, wounding on fives because minus one. Three. One, two, three. Saving on fours because of all out defence. That was a waste of time. Yep. Now the gatebreaker is going to throw his hurled boulder, which, because of the idiots with flight rule, is going to hit on a two. And wounds on a two, because that's what it wounds on. Minus three, was it? Or minus... minus three. Minus three. Okay, so two plus save, saves on a five. Because Mystic Shield is still in play. And it saves. And the second time he's done that. The looks passing between these two. I mean, I can't point the camera at them. I really can't. 
Now we have 48 shots from the 16? 15, 15. 16. 16 from the... Si Hang on. Yeah, 48 shots. Mm. I'm sure my maths are right. 48 shots, all out attack into the um, the Volkite Berserkers. So you're on fours because you're all out attack. 25 hits. Winning on fours. 16 saves or 5 plus. Four. Oh, yes, 5 plus. 5 plus. They're the ones without the sling shields. 9 wounds in total. Kills 4, puts 1 on a wound. So the start of the charge phase. Stoneclaw is charging first. Needs an 8 to get where he wants to go. No. You're four to victory. No. No. Okay. Where are we going next? These guys. The Savage Oryx. It's a seven. Yep, that'll be enough to get them where I want them. And the Savage Oryx ending up here. The more boys are going to attempt a, uh, a charge. Want a nine with the drummer. That's a ten. Where are they going to go? The more boys deciding to charge at these Duardin to try and hack at their exposed flesh. The War Stomper, probably quite disgruntled, is going to have to turn around and go for the Stormcast. On a five. Mm, five. That'll do it. Yeah. Then Thunderous Charge on a three plus, was it? Two plus? Two plus. Two plus. Do they just against D3 against a non-monster, I believe? You probably will. Yeah, crushing charge D3 against uh, non-monsters. Non-monsters, yeah. Two two. But two damage on one of them. The Beast Smasher is next to charge. 2D6. 4-7. Are you, are you content with that? Are you keeping that? Yeah, I'm good. So I think that gets you into the Paladins, doesn't it? Yeah. From our Major Ring. And Impact Hits. A crushing Charge. The 2 plus. And a 2. Does D3. For 3. Kills 1. Uh, Blaze of Glory. Blaze of Glory. No damage from Blaze of Glory. Um, I will also unleash Hell with the Judicars. So the Justicars unleashing hell. First off, the Bolt Storm crossbows. Four plus to hit because minus one for unleashing hell. Each hit counting as two, so 14 in total, winning on threes. Zero Ren, so nine saves of four up. One, two, three, four wounds get through. Now the Thunderbolt crossbow. Two shots each with the Prime gets an extra attack. So hitting on fours. Two. Wounding on? Threes. Two. Render... These two. Are render two. So two saves of six plus. No. Two damage each. So that's four more damage. So eight damage in total taken from the unleashing of the hell. Now the big stickers. Looking for big numbers. Big stabbers. Big stabbers. Looking for big numbers. They are not big numbers. Are you going to forward to victory? Mm, no. No. Okay. They will big stab stick. They'll do stuff later. They're, 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 they're biding their time. They'll stick their stabbers in stuff. It, yes, indeed. Right. Monstrous rampages. So three monstrous rampages for the uh, for the Mega Gargans because there are no monsters left in the forces of order, my friend. So the Beast Smasher is going to roar at the Paladins on a 3+. plus. They are locked off from their command points. No, they stand there stalwart in the face of the bellowing. Maybe it's the fact the guy's got an arm stuck between his teeth that makes him just not take him so seriously. He's like, he's waving at us with his chin arm. Uh, so where are we going now? Uh, that one is going to stomp. A stomp for, uh, on a 2+. plus For D3 Mortal Wounds. Two. For two, uh, this one's already taken two damage, Here's so glory. it will die. No, no damage done to the gargant as it as it blazes, and then and the gatebreaker is also going to roar on a three plus. Yes, so six. So the evocate the the celestial dracolines this time are spooked, and commands cannot be issued or received. 
Okay, that's Monstrous Rampages. So, now, <laughs> there are a lot of places that personally I would want to 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 uh, to start. But I do have a question for you. There. What? I want to start there. What? I want to start there. But but, what? but not what? No, not what? Not what? I do have two things, however. Um, I'm going to declare Storm of Annihilation from these paladins onto this unit just there. Okay. I'm also going to spend a command point on a fierce counterattack from this unit of berserkers. What was that, James? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's got, that's got the least gusto of any war I have ever heard. <laughs> now, come on. One, two, three. Wow. 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 Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Right. Moving on. So the Hearthguard Berserkers have gained strikes first. And with their axes, they have a two-inch range and two attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on threes. With 19 attacks, was it? Yes, because the call has an extra attack. attack. Yeah. 14 hits, wounding on threes. So, 10 hits, rend one. Save of six plus, they all go through. Two damage each is 20 ward saves. But because... Wah... Uh, they have a 4 plus ward. So 20 ward saves of 4 plus. Exactly 5 die. So James is going with the Gatebreaker next. Starting with the Death Grip. Yeah. One attack. Yeah. Hitting on. Uh, ordinarily 3 plus, but because there's a flag in there. Oh, right, yes. Uh, Idiots with two. flags. There's an idiot with a flag. So a 6. Now, is that just something special for him? Uh, no, that's with his Fort Crusher Flail. Ah, okay. So there's a wound on a two. Which that's wound? a two. Minus two rend. So that's a four plus save because they still have Mr. Mr. Shield. Shield. That's a four. And he did it again, James. He did. I'm beginning to wish that we had done a pulverising strike. <laughs> I tried to bait you. Um, almighty Stomp. Two attacks. Hitting on twos because of idiots with flags. One hit. Wounds on a two because of um, finest hour, <laughs> and then four attacks with the four crusher flail. Come on, four sixes. That that yeah, four. Show four. me what you got. Four sixes. No. What, what was he hitting on? Uh, he Twos. Was hitting on because of idiots of flags. Threes. Oh, was he degraded? No, he's naturally that, that's naturally four plus. Ah, uh, oh. idiots of flags makes it three plus. Winning on twos because of finest hour. Yeah. So two wounds. Minus three. So two saves of five plus. Damage. Makes one. It's f four? four damage. Okay, puts... The prime was he, wound was he un in, uninjured? They were all in injured, yes. Uninjured. The prime has taken four wounds. Is that all his attacks? Yeah. Yeah, you should have done the pulverizing strike, mate. Yeah, hindsight's yeah. a wonderful thing, but it's not as good as foresight. <laughs> nah, well, we, we, we both said... But I mean, we would, we would have either rejoiced in the four plus leading to D, four d six mortal wounds, or we'd have laughed at the <laughs> less than four leading to nothing. Yeah, there's just multiple opportunities to laugh, wasn't there? Oh well, yeah, and if was, we fail, succeed, or just roll four one. It was going to be funny one. either way. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, okay, the fulminators are activating, so the paladins atop the uh, the dracoths. Five attacks each, but because of Storm of Annihilation, plus one to hit, plus one to wound. So, twos to hit, twos to wound. I think I will all out defence with them. Okay. And twos to wound. They all wound. So that's eight. So, rend of two. Two. Okay, so, uh, base of five, plus one for the Mystic Shield, minus, plus one for all out defence. Back to back to fives. Yeah. Okay, so you save two of them. Three. Three of them, even. I can count. And a ward of four plus. Are these one damage? They're one damage, yes. So three damage go through. The mounts with their claws and fangs, they don't get the benefit from Storm of Annihilation. Yeah. So threes and threes. So four hits. 
two wounds. Rend? Two. Two. Two saves of five plus. Two damage. So four ward saves of four plus. Okay, two pass, two fail. So five damage taken in total. Okay, so now we come to the war stomper. The first thing is hurled body. So do, do you need to roll for it to happen? Uh, yeah, so I roll the dice, which is a six. six. I add the number on the damage table for hurled dice, which is current, uh, sorry, hurled body, which is plus two, so that makes eight. Yeah. If the result is at least double the model's wounds characteristic in the target well, unit. They have three, so double would be yeah. six. Eight is higher than six. What happens? That, that model is slain. And then I roll another dice. Oh. On a four plus, I can then lob that at another unit. And okay. it would inflict the number of mortal wounds equal to the wounds characteristic of the model that I lobbed. Okay, so you, you picked up the one at the back, threw it over there. When it hit the concrete, not injuring anyone else, it died and the lightning went skywards. Yeah. Yes. Got one. Yeah. Uh, death grip. Okay, death grip. I've got all that defense, I believe. Okay. Uh, so one attack will hit on a three. Nope. No. Nope. Jump up and down. Four attacks will hit on threes. Three hits. We'll wound on threes. One wound. One wound. At minus two. Minus two. So you've got a three Oops. plus save because you've got plus two minus two. Pass on a five. And then. So eight attacks for Titanic Border Club. One bay, sorry, four for the number of models, plus four from the uh, value in the table. Hitting on? Uh, hitting on three. Three, so that's five hits. Wounding on? Threes. Four wounds. Rend? Minus two. Minus two, so four, three, four saves of three plus. Two fail? Uh, two damage each. Two damage each. Four damage in total. Kills one. Kills one and uh, take, puts a wound in another. Cool. Now, Joe, activating the decimators, they pile in. Only two of them get in range because those massive axes have a one inch range. But just following the recent FAQ, these tiny little Duardin ones, two inches. One inch range, two inch range. One inch range, two inch range. <sighs> I'm, I'm calm now. Okay, so five attacks each, plus one for the prime. Eleven attacks, hitting on threes. Whoa. Four hits, wounding on threes. Two wounds. Two wounds. At minus two, two saves of six plus. Yeah. Make one. Pass one, one cocked one. Make okay, another point of damage. Now the Beast Smasher is activating and he is going into the Judicators with all of his weapons who are all out defencing. I'm all out attacking. And you're all out attacking. Okay, so which weapon first? Men here club. Okay, hitting on. Three attacks, hitting on twos with all out attack. Can you see okay there? I can, yes. Thank you. Two hits. Wounding on twos? Wounding on twos. Two wounds, minus three rend on his current damage. Okay, so off. fours becomes threes becomes sixes. 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 No. Flat, how many? Five. So that's ten damage. <clears throat> yeah. And only one of them is within an inch. So you've got two dice for Blazing Glow. Well, yeah. if you take that one oh, off, yeah. of course. Yeah. One mortal wound. Does a mortal wound? Yeah. And five of them come off. And that was just the first weapon. Five dead. Now we come to your mighty stomps. Again, hitting on twos. Two hits. Wounding on? Threes. Uh, two twos. Oh. Two twos. So neither. Yeah. Death grip. One attack. Hits on a two. Yep. Wounds on a two. Nope. To one. Is that your lot? That's it. Well, you killed five. Yeah. Better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Okay, the lead belters are attacking. They pile in. Their range is two inches as they attempt to club the gargant's shins with cannons. Two attacks each plus one for the champion. Nine attacks hitting on. Threes. The dice have deserted you. Three hits. Wounding on. Threes. 
One wound, no rend. Four plus save. No, but your dice have remained consistently bad. Two damage. So two damage taken from the lead belchers. Now the more boys have piled in. There are nine in range. And they have how many attacks each of the charge? Four. Four. Hitting on? Fours. Hitting on four. More boys? I thought they hit on better. Nope. Oh, okay. Fours. And including the exploding sixes, 30 hits. Now wounding on threes. 20 wounds. So 20 saves of five plus. 12 damage in total. Six of the half guard dead. Now the protector's attacking. With the prime, it's 11 attacks. Sitting on threes. Seven hits, winning on threes. Six wounds. Six wounds, minus two. Six saves of five plus. Six plus even. That was close. Five damage taken. Okay, now we come to these savage Uruks. Nine in range, plus the champion, eight, 19 attacks. Hitting on fours. Ten hits. On the charge, winning on threes. So what's that? Six. Six. No rend. Six saves of three plus. One damage. Hmm. Okay, the evocators pile in. Two of them are in combat range. Nine attacks from the uh, storm staves and spikes. Tempest, blade. Tempest blades. Hitting on threes. And because Empower is still in effect, they wound on twos. Ooh. And four ones. Rend? Rend of one, one damage. Rend of one, one damage. Okay. Four plus save, but it's his finest hour, so four saves on four plus. He's taken 23 damage. He's now taken 27. Four more. Ouchie. <laughs> And then the monstrous claws from the mounts. Um, the pack alpha is still within range, so they get four attacks each. Okay. So three, eight attacks. Threes and twos. Drop back, don't count. So that's five hits. And two to wound. Five wounds. Rend of two? Rend of one. Rend of one. Back to fours. And so four go through. D3 damage. D3 damage each. For three, four, five, six, seven. So he's now taken 34 out of his 40 damage. Ouch. Yeah, he's still kicking. Celestial at, lightning arc. At the moment. <laughs> okay, so there's now only four guys in the unit. So it's only 12 dice now, not 18. Because you. Oh, because you didn't manage to kill that one guy there. If you had, the unit would have been out of combat and all sorts. But could have, would have, should have, didn't it? Yeah. Right, four pluses. You want six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. Timber. <laughs> so the gatebreaker is slain. And we need to check what that means. So, he falls over and squishes a lot of stuff. But he could go either way. So, the um, the guys roll off. And whoever wins picks the point at which he falls. That's that is a six. So, you pick a point within five inches. And every unit within three inches takes D3 mortal wounds. Okie dokie. So, the point on the battlefield is chosen. Tis here. Which will catch these uh, half guard berserkers, the Doom Seeker and the Evocators. The Evocators take D3 mortal wounds for two, which does kill that one and puts a wound on another. The Volkite Berserkers take two, which kills one of them. The Doom Seeker takes one as they then try and clamber out from underneath a carved Mega Gargant. And now, of course, I can't remember if we mentioned this on camera or not. That means the uh, the uh, the oathbound ability of the the um, doomseeker of the doomseeker. Thanks, Joe. Uh, was no longer applicable because his target, the mega gargant, has died. Right. We now need to work out some battle shock and count up who controls what objectives. I think it's pretty obvious, but we just need to check. 
but Battleshock. Okay, Battleshock. This unit of um, Savage Oryx lost two. Their bravery is currently seven, so on a six, one will run. One run. The injured one succumbs to its wounds. Now, the Protectors, because they are part of a Stormkeep and they are within 12 inches of a Redeemer unit, they get plus one bravery. I don't think we mentioned that at the start of the game. Uh, so, the bravery is eight. Three died. So, six, one will run. Five. Five, one doesn't run. So, the more boys are currently bravery eight. They lost five. Five plus D6. Two. Seven, no one runs. Right, the half guard berserkers are bravery eight. They lost six this round. I think that's a two. That could uh, from above that could be a two or a six. That that needs to roll again? That, yes, please. So they run. So six and five is eleven. They lose yeah, they're they're, they're, they're they're gone. Right, the Volkite Berserkers issue inspiring presence to themselves, and therefore they do not run. Right, the Fulman... The Evocators. Evocators can't fail. The Redeemer unit, however, they've lost five. Their bravery is eight. Eight and... Uh, five and two is seven, so they hold firm. I don't think the Paladins can fail. No. Nope. So I think that's all the Battleshock. So at the end of their turn two, the forces of destruction hold two objectives and gain two points. Let's see what the forces of order, kind of, do in their second turn. So hero phase shenanigans. It's the uh, Beast Smasher's uh, finest hour. And the, uh, the weird knob has used heroic leadership to create a command point, which has happened. There was some attempt, attempting of leadership over here, but they failed. It's the people that are clearly disconcerted by the mega gargant that is just wading through things. And on that basis, uh, Joe has issued his once per game holy order, which is called Thunderbolt Volley. Which means you basically you can pick a shooting unit in the command phase, and they just get to fire. They do. So we have post on crossbows. Yep, six attacks. Hitting on threes. Hitting on threes. So that's going to be eight hits. And threes to wound. Six wounds. No rend. Six saves of three plus. It's his finest hour. One damage goes through. He's now taken a total of ten. But you've still you've got two of the thunderbolt crossbows. The big badabooms. Hitting on threes. Three of those. Wounding on threes. One of those. Rend of two, saving on a five. Yes! Excellent. Okay, right. Okay, spells. There are three spells to be cast. We've measured up. There are three opposing wizards. Everyone is in range of one, so there's a casting and unbinding for each one. So, Evocators, casting and power on a five. That's an eight. Nine to unbind. That's not a nine. They are empowered. Now, Azurite Halo with yep. the Lord Arcanum. Going off on a five. That's six. a six. Unbinding on a seven. Yes. That's an that eight. is unbound. The, <laughs> the, the green wah power completely disrupts his etheric channeling. And Mystic Shield from the Knight in Cancel. Correct. On a five. Goes off on a seven. Unbinds on an eight. No, so who is mystically shielded? On the decimators. The decimators, yes. okay. Anything else? Hero phase. Um, that should be all of the hero phase. I okay, believe. time to move. Okay, we've done moving, but I should mention the Urgold rune, Urgold rune for the Fire Slayers with the Rune of Foresight, so they're getting plus one to hit on their fire steel throwing axes. Movement-wise... Over here, the Ogre Gluttons have a race down here to go and eat some Oryx. The Oryx, however, these are canny hunters, and they have backed off with a 6-inch redeploy. So that charge does get considerably longer. Although, you know, they're, they're still quite close to the, uh, the hog roast. Then over here, the Retributors have moved up. They're all clearly going to be eyeing a charge because they can do some serious damage to big things. It is their job. The Sequitors 
positioning slightly for future support, take it, um, piling in and, and so on. Uh, the... Li- Judicators. The Judicators have <laughs> moved back to allow the, the Retributors in. In the centre, the Evocators have moved up. The Lord Arcanum has run to this point, but is currently within six inches of an enemy unit. So when it comes to activating and piling in, the mount trait means that even though he's run, he'll be able to pile in and attack, which is super sneaky. Then here in the centre, the Gluttons and the uh, Volkite Berserkers are moving up to uh, get stuck into these Oryx. The uh, Doomseeker following behind, because he can't keep up, he's knackered. Then over here we have uh, we have the Iron Guts. It's down to the guts, eyeing up the more boys. Over here we have the other unit of Volkite Berserkers have moved forward to throw their fire steel axes at the War Stomper and then see what they can do with the charge. There is a big wall to clamber over, but maybe they can go into the guys over here. We'll work that out when we know what their charge roll is. Have I forgotten anything? No. Excellent. Right, it's time to shoot stuff. So the Judicator is firing into the Mega Gargant. Three bolts on crossbows. Hitting on th- threes. Three. So four hits. So yeah, two hits becomes four. Winning on three. Three wounds. Threes. Three wounds. Okay, three saves of three plus because it's his finest hour. Okay, two damage goes through. Now the Thunderbolt crossbows, hitting on threes, hits five times. Uh-oh. Threes to win. Winning on threes. Five wounds. Rend of two. So five saves of five plus. You pass two of them. That's two damage each, though. Six damage goes through. Ouch. So now the lead belchers are going to attack. They stayed still, so the thunderous blasts of hot metal rule applies. They basically get double shots. So 2d3 shots each for that many shots. 17 shots, hit on fours. 10 hits, winning on threes. Five at round one, so five saves on four plus. It's finest hour. Four more go through. Are they actually no one damage, are they? No one damage, yes. Four more go through. Ten fire steel hand axes being thrown at the war stomper, hitting on threes because of rune of foresight. Seven hits, winning on fours. One, two, three, four. Saves a four plus, no rend. Two pass, two fail, two damage taken. And one guy from here was able to throw a throw over there and did no damage. So charge phase. So charge phase, the glutters are charging, they get plus one to charge rolls because of, uh, they have a bellower, and they charge four inches, that makes them nowhere, you're going to fall to victory with your single solitary command point? Single solitary command point. Yes! Whoa. They're hungry. Okay, they are hungry, it's true, they are hungry. Not that hungry. hungry. (laughs) Now we come to the Retributors. Seven. We need the tape measure. And they end up here. Kind of obscured by this canopy. But a couple of them have made it in with their one inch range with their massive hammers. Tiny little hand axes. Two inch range. Massive hammers. Tiny little hand axes. Where are we going next, Joe? Evocators? Evocators. Uh, Correct. Okay. Seven. That gets them somewhere. The evocators ending up here, engaging with the uh, more more boy, the boar boy maniacs. Hey, and it looks like they're within three inches of the big uh, stabbers. The big stabbers, big stabbers. Okay, Lord, I can't can't charge because he ran, but he can activate if he's within six inches of a unit, which he is. Okay, the gluttons are they next or they're next? Okay, Just one from the bellower. Eight in total. Okay, they end up here. A trampling charge is in effect. So, as they connect with the more boys, you roll a dice 
one dice for each of the, the, the for the number you rolled on the uh, charge dice, which was a seven. It was plus one because of the bellow, but it's seven on the dice. You can roll seven dice, and because of your um, because of your sub faction, fives do mortal wounds. But because there's three or more in the unit, it's plus one, so it's fours do mortal wounds. Those is arrow boys. Those is more boys. Oh, arrow boys. Those is arrow boys. Are you unleashing hell? See if there's any alive after this. <laughs> yeah, I think we do this first. Okay, two mortal wounds. Six of wards. Yep. yep. One gets trampled in the charge. Right, now the iron guts. They get an 11. So they move 12. Well, better we use. <laughs> They're just going to get in. Uh, but. You're gonna have to. You're gonna roll eleven dice for, um, for the avalanche. No, not avalanche of flesh. The trampling, trampling charge. charge. And again, it's fours plus to wound to do mortal wounds for the same reasons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ward saves of six plus. Make one fail five, so two and a half. Get trampled. And the tyrant charges, barging past his iron guts to do it. Eight. Yeah, that's an eight inch charge. Now his uh, trampling charge will only go off on five because he is not a unit of three or more models. On four. Five. Five, fives, fives. One. Ward save six plus. No. Now the fire slayers. It's three to climb up the wall, three to jump down and not break their knees, and then three inches away. So they're going to need a nine to get in. That's a six. Nope. They know one they can charge, because it's the, it's the three inches up and the three inches down that does it, so they can't get anywhere. Not without murdering these guys first. Which, would, which wouldn't be cricket. Another unit! We found another unit! Okay, the Volkite Berserkers... No. Four plus one five. Nah, it doesn't look like it. Monstrous rampages. Both mega gargants are just lashing out at the models near the enemy nearby and stomping on them. The beast smasher on a two plus. Four does D three mortal wounds. For two. The Retribute is taking two mortal wounds, not enough to kill one. Over here, stomping on the Protectors. Yep. On a two plus. That's a five. Now you'll roll a one. No, three mortal wounds. That kills the one that was already injured and puts a wound on another. But he will go up in a blaze of glory. On sixes. Mortal wounds are done. No, it's like Skittles. So, Joe, to no one's surprise, Joe choosing to activate the Retributors first. They have two attacks each? Three attacks each. Three attacks each. Uh, James is all out defending, so given it's his finest hour, the Gargant has a two plus save at the moment, but these are Rend two. So, three attacks each, plus one for the Prime, is 16, 16. attacks, hitting on threes. Sixes do two mortal wounds, however. Yeah, it bypasses the other stuff, yeah. One. one six. Eleven hits, winning on threes. Four wounds, plus two, minus two, four plus save. Make two fails. Perfectly average, two damage each, four damage taken, plus the two mortals, six taken in total. He, how many has he, has he already taken? He'd taken 23, was it? Looking at the, the, cra the, the crazy magic voodoo device. Uh, 22 is taken. He's taken 22 plus another 6. We've taken 28 yep. out of 35. I imagine he's going next before other things club him to very death. Okay, so the Mega Gargan, well, this, this, the Beast Smasher, putting his men here club into the Ogres and the uh, both the other weapons into the Decimators? Yes. Okay, so the men here club, how many attacks? Three. Hit on. Threes. Three hits. Winning on twos. 
Three wounds at minus... Minus two on his current wounds profile. Right, they have a save of five plus. So they go straight through. They go straight through. They a five, flat five each, that's 15 damage. So there's one left with one wound? Y yeah. Now we have Almighty Stomp on the Decimators. Plus one to hit because they have a wound characteristic of three or less. Yeah, so two attacks hitting on threes. Two, two hits. hits. You're not following your previous form of now missing with all of these. Oh, sorry, I said hit on threes. It's hit on twos. Wounding on threes. That, there you go. Yeah. That, ne neither wounded. And then it's, it's he, he bounced off the, the crunchy ceramite, uh, sigmarite uh, shell. <laughs> but no, 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 no. no, no, no. Desperate. No. One Desperate. attack, hitting on a three. Hits! Wounds on a two. Wounds on a two. Wounds! D6 damage. Ren? Oh, sorry, Ren minus two. On whom? It's a decimator. So they, they are... Two plus save currently. They were Mystic Shield. Were they, were they all like defended? No, they weren't. Mystic yeah. Shield. So minus two. One save of four plus. <laughs> so, true to form, the men here clubs does damage. Nothing else does. Right. Yo, go again, Joe. Yay. Do you know where you're going? I think I'm going to go with some... Evocators. So the Evocators piled in. Two into the Big Stabbers, one into the Boar Boys. We're doing the Big Stabbers first? Yes, we'll do the Big Stabbers first. Okay. Three so, attacks each, is it? Um, four attacks each. Four attacks each with the Staves and Swords? Yep, threes and twos, because uh, they've power. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. F four hits. And three wounds. Rend? Rend one. Rend one. So I don't get saved. Uh, ward saves, then? How many? Three. No, three damage. So one has got one wound left. Okay. So the Celestial Draco Lions have three attacks each, plus one because they are close to the Alpha. So four attacks each, hitting on threes. Seven hits. Wounding on threes. Twos because Twos of empower. Twos because of empower. Okay, so that's seven. They are rend lots. Rend one, D3 damage. Okay, so we roll for the damage. That is... Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen ward saves of six. Six. Two passed. So... Eleven wounds. Eleven wounds get through. Plus the three is twelve, so that means there'll be... One. No, eleven plus three is fourteen. Yes. They've got four each? Yes. No, it, yes, they've got four each. So, okay, so 4, 8, 12, 16. One's left having taken two damage and three are dead. Yeah. Okay, they have a rule called Final Fling. They hurl their big stabbers forward when they are removed as casualties. On four pluses, they do D3 mortal wounds. You don't dare kill them. Two. So two, they do to two D3 mortal wounds. For a total of four. Doesn't quite kill one because they're five wounds each. Right, now the Tempest Blade of Stormstave into the Boar Boys. Three hits. And twos. Three wounds. Three wounds. Rend was one, so saves of six, I think. Are they? No, no, they don't have shields. Yeah. So it's ward saves again. No, three damage go through. We'll kill one. That kills a boar. Then the Monstrous Claws. Two hits. Wounding on twos. Two wounds. D3 damage? For three. Three damage. Three ward saves. Kills another one. Two boar boys killed. Then Celestial Lightning Arc into the boar boys. So 12 dice this time. That doesn't look like 12 dice. No, I missed three. So three more? Irrelevant. So three mortal wounds. No, it's not 12. I'm, I'm oh, making no. stuff up. It was still three. It, it was, was still three. Three mortal wounds into the ball boys. Sixes. One war... The uh, electricity flashes into his war paint and does no damage. But apart from the two wounds that really, really, really hurt. Right, now James activating the big stabbers. Three attacks each. Yep. Hitting on? Threes. Okay. Twelve attacks hitting on threes. Sixes that explode. Sixes explode, okay. That's nine hits, but the explosion means that's 11 hits out of 12 dice. Not too shabby. 
Wounding on three. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wounds. Rend? Minus two. Minus two, so uh, no save, because I have a, a save of five plus. So although the save doesn't apply, they these guys have iron fists, and an unmodified save of six does a mortal wound back to the target unit. So we're going to roll them anyway. Nothing's going to be saved, but... Um, seven, that, saves. seven saves. So six years will do mortal wounds back to the big stabbers. Three mortal wounds, which will kill a big stabber. A oh, ward saves, of course. So one takes two damage. Yeah, and it wouldn't have killed one because they've got four wounds each, not three. Oh, of course. Three die, and one takes two damage. Right, Joe going with the Iron Guts next. They have three attacks each for a total of 12 plus one for the unit champion. Hitting on threes. Seven hits, winning on threes. That's cock dice there. One, four. two, three, four. Rend? Two. Okay, so that's going to go through the save. Yeah. Damage three. <laughs> That's four, was it? Yes, it was four. Yeah, yeah. So, 12 war saves. I'll tell you what, Joe, so many read the card. <laughs> it's unbroadcastable. Three. So, so, nine wounds go through. Nine damage. So, the war stomper fights next. He hasn't... He isn't bracketed, so he's still on his full profile. The very first thing he does is tries to pick up and throw that paladin. So you roll the dice with a six. You add the value from the table, which we know is two, is eight. If it's more than double the wounds, which we know it is, he crushes it to death and throws it in a nearby unit. So on a four plus. Yep. Yes. He throws it at another unit within 12 inches and does a number of mortal wounds equal to the wounds characteristic of the slain model. So three mortal, three mortal wounds, wounds into the fulminators. fulminators. And now you decide where you put your attacks. Yeah. Which... Blaze of Glory for being slain? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. A mortal, a mortal wound. wound. Right, now he's all out attacking and putting all his attacks into the fulminators. Titanic Boulder Club, five attacks. Hitting on all that. Mm. Five hits. Winning on threes. Four Minus wounds. Minus two. Minus two. These aren't all out anything, are mm. they? So threes becomes fives. You pass three, though. Two damage each. So they, they have six in total, don't they? Um, I believe so. I'll double check. Okay, so this formulator is slain. They do have six wounds. Blaze of Glory will be rolled. No damage taken. Right, next weapon. Uh, jump up and down. Okay. So, four attacks, hitting on twos because of all that attack. Four, four hits. hits. Wounding Wound on threes. threes. So this is where it normally goes wrong. Two. Two. Rend. Minus two. Okay, so fives. Both go through. How many damage? D3. For five. five. <laughs> One wound remaining. A death grip. Okay, and that hits on a... Two, because of all attack. Hits. Wounds on a two. Wounds. Minus two. Save on a five. No. The D3 mortal wounds. Can't D6. not kill it. D6. That's not a monster. It doesn't matter. It's D6. Oh, it's D6. Of course it yeah, is. You're if right. If it was a monster, it's D6. and just, two, you, two D6 and you pick the best one. Just roll it and see how much of your probability you use up. Oh, there you go. Four. <laughs> Right, but it will blaze of glory and potentially fry some oryx. Uh, very, a very energetic throw, Joe. Uh, no, nothing. Okay, now Joe is activating these gluttons. They have three, three attacks each. each. The unit champion is dead, so does not get an extra attack on account of being a corpse. Hitting on threes? Yes, so three misses. And wounding on threes. No, they will not get better when the necromancer turns up. A bit of off-mic chat there. <laughs> that necromancer is only trying to raise gargantuan beasts, those necromancers. They're not going to raise anything humanoid that can talk because 
they have promised. Yes. Honest. Yes. Promised. Uh, two wounds. Two wounds. Two wounds. How much damage? Two each. Two each. Rend. One. So they lose the save. And so war paint. Sixes. Ooh, pass one. Yep. So one gets a, his leg ripped off, but still, he's, I'm getting better. And another dies. Place of glory. Oh, no, wrong army. Okay, now James activating the uh, more boys. They pile in. Two are attacking the Iron Guts and the rest going into the Tyrant. So two against the Iron Guts. Three attacks each, six attacks. Hitting on fours. Yep. One hit. Wounding on a four. Three. Three. I thought they had to be charging to do that. No, that's no. those guys. That's that's those guys, right. Okay. Yeah. So no wounds. No wounds there. Okay, now the rest into the Tyrant. Now the remaining attacks into the Tyrant. Six hits, wounding on fours. Threes, threes, wounding on threes. Uh, two. Two. Right, these get passed off, do they, to the... If he fails to save, instead of making a ward roll, I can pass it off onto... Ah, right, okay. Save. So two saves of four plus. Passes one. Pass for fails first one. one. Is he going to try and pass it off to the Iron Guts? Uh, no, he's going to go for the ward roll. He's going to get uh, okay. stuck he's in. A, he's a death cheater. Yeah. yeah. Five plus ward. Norman death cheater. Cheats death again. Ah... Now the Lord Arcanum, benefiting from etheric swiftness, piles in five and a half inches and attacks the Boar Boys. Four attacks, hitting on threes. Three hits. Well, this is an ether stay, is it? It's an ether yeah. stay. Winning on threes. threes. Two wounds. Rend of one. A bypass is just saved, isn't it? Yeah. Um, two damage each. each. Four wards. None. None. Four damage. One had taken two. Yep. So that kills the two guys in front of him, I guess. Yep. Now the monstrous claws from the Alpha. Of course, he doesn't get the benefit of his own. Does he get the benefit of his it. own? It is all Celestial Dracoline. Okay. Um, so hitting on threes. Okay, two hits. Threes to wound. One wound. Rend of two. So it's D3 damage. For three. Three ward saves. Three more damage kills the last. Oh no, there's two. No, no there is. You're no, right. No, no, he's, he's a hero. Yeah. So kills this guy, and the boar boys are taken out. Now we have the big stabber. Three attacks. Threes. And threes. No. Right now we come to the tyrant attacking with his thunder mace first. How many attacks? Three attacks. Okay. Hit on threes. Threes. Sixes do extra stuff. Okay. No extra stuff. Two hits. Wounding on threes. With his thunder mace. Two wounds. Rend? Two. Two. No save. Two damage. damage each. Three damage each. Six ward saves for the more boys. No. Three dead more boys. And the next weapon is a beast skewer glaive. So two attacks hitting on threes. One. Wounding on a that. Dra three. Yeah, that. <laughs> Uh, rend one, D3 damage. For two. Two more uh, ward saves. But I thought another one dies. That's four in total. Okay, the Maniac Weird Knob is piling in, and he is absolutely going to kill the Lord Arcanum, isn't he, James? No, he's really not. Oh. That Maniac Weird Knob never kills anything. In fact, never even hits anything. Never mind kills anything. Okay, how many attacks? Three attacks with his... Bone Beast Staff. Hitting it's on. Fours. That looks like two sixes to me. Are they anything special? Uh, yeah, they explode. Hello. Four hits. Wounding on threes. That looks oh. like three... It's either a five or a six from above, so it's either... It, yeah, either is fine, yeah. Three wounds at minus one. Okay, so... Three saves of four plus. One fail. D3 damage. One. For one. Ow! At least he inflicted a wound. He scratched the annoying. paintwork of my Dracoline. I've only just had it waxed. Um, four attacks from the tusks and hooves on the boar. Hitting on fours. Uh, one. Wounding on a four. One. one. Saving on rend. a one. How many rend? No rend. No rend. Passes. You see? You injured him. He's absolutely dead. Or at least he will be if you do that eight more times. 
Okay, the Decimator is activating and attacking the Beast Smasher. 21 attacks. Threes and threes. Only three misses. Threes to wound. One more save. So he's a Ren 2, uh, but you are, it's both your finest hour and you all out defended early. That feels like a long time ago. <laughs> so you're back to fours. Six damage taken, taking him up to, wait for it, 34 wounds taken out of 35. He's still there. Although there is a single solitary lead belcher nursing his smashing arms, ribcage, belly. Uh, I wonder, you never know. You never know. Could it be down? Could the ogres be the the heroes of, uh, of this battle? Oh, I don't know. Right. Uh... I wonder where we're going next. Now the Arab boys are attacking the Gluttons. Two attacks each, five in combat, so ten attacks in on fours. Four hits wounding on fours. No. So the single remaining lead belt, the last combat of the battle round, piles in to the really rather poorly beast smasher. Three attacks, hitting on threes. One hit. Oh, it's tense. Wounding arm. Threes. Any wounds? Rend? No rend. No rend. Two plus... Save. Hang on, hang on, hang on. James. Anything but a one. Dirty duck now. Anything but a one. Hey! We missed something else. So, gulping bites on a, on a four plus. These gluttons will... To inflict D3 mortal wounds as they eat the Oryx. Yes. One. But one. One was already wounded. They finish him off. They smell blood. They go, I'm just about that. War save? Right. A oh, war save. <laughs> right. We now need to work out battle shock and control of objectives. We just worked out uh, this one off camera. They're, given how many of no one has any CPs, there's no inspiring presence. Given how many of these have lost, they're going to lose three plus D6. There's only four of them, so the more boys have gone. They're charging off into the city, but in a really random, erratic way. Right, the Arrow Boys, their bravery is currently seven. They lost three. Seven plus five is eight. One of them runs. Right, the Gluttons, their bravery is 6, but they're eating because they're in combat, so their bravery goes up to 8, plus 1 for the Realm, 9, they cannot run. So these big stabbers, their bravery is 7, and they've lost 3. Hot runs off, they drop the big stabber and head for the hills. Maybe they can't pull it out of the corpse of that Dracoline. And then over here, the only other unit that's lost any models are these... Lead belchers, but because of the same arithmetic that applied over here, they can't lose. I mean, he's gnawing on a beast smashing giant's leg, and it's giving him plus two bravery. I mean, on the what, big toe, what a way to live. <laughs> so, doing the arithmetic here, there are 12 Oryx, four Ogres. The Ogres count as two. The Oryx control this objective. This remains in the hands of the forces of destruction. However, over here, the evocators most definitely control uh, this objective, and it becomes uh, it's held by the city defenders. Uh, so that is at the end of battle round. The end of turn two. Is it only turn two? Yep. That's three points for the forces of order. And <laughs> as we get ready to go into battle round three, but we know what that means. It's a priority roll, gentlemen. Good luck to you both. Good luck. I need it. An order wins. Do you want to go first I'm gonna, or second? I'm going to go first here, I think. You're going first. Going okay. First. Battle round three. So, hero phase. So, heroic actions. Both the Lord Arcanum and the Maniac Weird Knob. It's their finest hours. They have got to leather each other till one of them dies, in theory. Uh, the uh, Doom Seeker has um, his, his heroic leadership he's used, and he has got the command point, but really he's just inspiring those around him is, is by his 
by his mere presence. The War Stomper heroically recovered a single wound, and the Urgold rune that is in play for the Fire Slayers is the Rune of Fury, giving them all plus one to hit in melee. The enhanced version did not go off. Now we come to spell casting. So what spell do first, Joe? Empower from the Evocators. Okay. Cast on five. Unbind with that one. Don't think we, we just check some ranges. Yeah, everyone's in range of one wizard to unbind. So that can be unbound in a six. Nine. Tis unbound. They are not empowered. Oh. Next spell. Arcane Bolt from the Lord Arcanum. Yeah, uh huh. Goes off on a six. The uh, that can be unbound on a seven. That is not a seven. Okay, so he's now holding an arcane bolt. He can release it at the start of any of the subsequent phases. Arcane bolt from the arcane bolt. No, silly got one wound like that. No, go on, roll your dice. Ten. Oh, I hope your face explodes. Come on, eleven. Ah. Oh. Check a rule. Okay, check a rule. So we were just checking a Sons of Bear Math thing. It only applies to things that basically kill models outright. We we're just checking. Uh, so the Knight Encounter is holding an arcane bolt and will throw it at the start of any subsequent phase. <sighs> I, I'm, I don't like you right now. Um, right, so the only other thing to mention is um, these Oryx rallied and one of them came back. And I think that's everything in the hero phase. Right. The There's still quite a lot on the table, but it's a lot sparser than it was earlier. Well, I mean, we've only been playing for nine hours, so... Yeah. Movement! So, at the very start of the movement phase, this one decides he's going to unleash the Arcane Bolt from the Knight Encantor, which flies 12 inches, strikes the Mega Gargant... Does him a wound, which takes his damage total to 35 out of 35, and he dies. But what's the magic word, James? Dimmer! Right, dice off. That was more enthusiastic than uh, that, did you uh, Yeah, I did. Oh, dear. Two and six. Right, Joe, you get to pick a point within... <laughs> <laughs> anywhere within five inches for it to land. <laughs> So we just had a discussion. We've all agreed that he can't fall onto this big building or potentially that big building, but he can through this, fall through this little porch. So that right there is five inches away, which is not within three inches of any other unit. So no one gets squished by the timber. And the second Mega Gargant of the game falls. Now, Joe is going to do the rest of his moves. So at the end of the movement phase, it kind of looks like this. These uh, The Fire Slayers uh, Volkite Berserkers are coming around here with their move of four inches, which really isn't a lot, as most uh, second edition 40k players will tell you. Uh, and they're probably eyeing up these Oryx. Norman Death Cheater Giant Breaker and his Iron Guts are definitely eyeing up a charge on the... War Stomper Mega Gargant. Uh, he wants to uh, to underline his name. In the centre of the field, the remaining Volkite Berserkers and the Doom Seeker are moving up to reinforce their comrades in arms. These these Ogor mercenaries, and a lot of a lot of profanity will be passed between them, or something like that. Over here, the Evocators are. Zeroing in on this unit of arrow boys, the gluttons are doing the same. They have a tar they have a couple of options, but the sequiturs also moving forward. Maybe they're going to try and get stuck in as well. The judicators uh, holding that back objective and presumably going to put fire down the table. The remaining lead belcher and the knight and cantor holding back slightly as the paladins push through, climbing over the corpse of the uh, Mega Gargant that they have brought low. And it's... Right this minute, it looks like it's a good day to be a citizen of Excelsis. But only right this minute. Give it... 
give it an hour, it's going to look quite different. Okay, the lead belcher. 2D3 shots into the weird boy, the poor boy maniac. The maniac weird knob. Maniac weird knob. Maniac weird knob. We just had a discussion. We know strictly by the rules he could shoot at this guy, but there is a solid wall of sigma right between him, and we've just we've concluded that it, it, he just would no, no, he can't. So two d three shots, but this guy's higher up. You see, you can fire over their heads. Two d three shots for five, hitting on fours. I'm hitting on four. Yes, fours. Two hits, winning on threes. One wound. Rend one. Save off. Uh, it's his finest hour, so a six. No. One damage. One damage. War paint? No. No. The Tyrant has a pair of Ogre pistols. They're basically like rifles. Put their pistol size in his hands. Okay, so it's two attacks hitting on fours. Uh huh. Um, however, because he is a giant breaker, these will do additional damage. Are they really? Yeah. Oh, splendid. So hitting on fours. One. One hit. Winning on threes. Yep. Rend, Rend. one. Save a five. Yes. It glances off his ankle sock thing. Maybe it pings off that um, spear that's hanging down the side. Ah, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah. indeed. Or the shield at the middle of his back. Yeah. Yes. Ping! Ricochet. And ten fire steel hand axes thrown at the war stomper. Hitting on fours, winning on fours. And winning on fours. One wound, one save, a four plus. Nope. Takes a point of damage. It's a problem with all these tall buildings. I can't. When the dice don't stay very still, when they get hurled across the table, looking at you guys. <laughs> now, six fire steel hand axes are being thrown at these. Uh, these arrow boys. There are some gaps to throw between the ogres. I really don't think the fire slayers give a hoot about whether they hit the ogres with a fire steel. So hit on fours? It was an accident! We were aiming at the oryx! Two hits. It's in the middle of my back! Two well, hits. wrong accent. <laughs> and it, ah! Two hits. Two wounds? Two wounds. Two saves of six? Yes. No. no. Wards? One died. And the Doomseeker throws his axe and puts a wound on one of the big stabbers. Okay, now the Judicators are firing at the Boar Boys. One of them is out of range, so we've got two Bolt Storm crossbows. Hitting on threes. So, six hits. <laughs> I love your math. <laughs> um, Wounding on four. Three. Threes. threes. So, threes. five wounds. F oh, yeah, and all that defence was declared by the Boar Boys. Mm -hmm. So, five saves of four plus. You want it. Uh, uh. Uh, make two. You make three. That's a four. Oh, see so yeah. Four saves of four plus. Yes. Five saves so two wounds. What save? Uh, wards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. So one damage done. Now the two big, uh, the big th chapters. the thunderbolt thing. The thunderbolt crossbows. Yeah. yeah. Hitting on threes. So two misses and wounding on threes. So two at rend two. So two saves to six plus. No, these are two, two damage two. each. So four wards. So five damage in total. Kills one and puts one on two damage taken. So one boar boy dead and one wounded. Now we come to the charge phase. The decimators are the first to charge. They get four. You will need to forward to victory if you want to get them in. Um, I will forward to victory. They'll okay. shoot to themselves. ACB. Nine. Nine. That'll do something. And they end up here. Now the decimators are going to charge. Eleven inches. And they end up here. Into the other Oruk wizard. Then the evocators. Evocators, correct. Eight inches. Unleash hell. And after the unleashing of the hell, eight wounds have been... Uh, scored. Saves of three plus. Okay, two wounds go through, but one of them has already on four damage. 
takes him up to five and kills him. It will kill him. And um, puts another one onto one. The Lord Arcanum, it will attempt to capture his soul, but the last wound will uh, will let it go. He has a rule. Yeah, you, you apply them one at a time. So the um, the fifth wound kills him. Yeah. Then he puts him back on one wound. Then the sixth wound kills him again. Yeah. It is called... Um, Cycle of the Storm. Cycle of the Storm. There you go. But he will blaze of glory. For five? One. One mortal wound. One mortal wound. Will save? Yep. No. Now the sequiters are charging. They need nine to get where they want to go. That's a six. Are you forwarding to victory? Um, yes, we will attempt. No guts, no glory. No. Seven. They do not make it. Speaking of guts, the gluttons... They make an eight. Well, nine inches, but then... So you need to roll eight dice for the uh, the impact hits. Which unit are they charging? So yeah, we could go into either. Yep, I will do the movement now. And they end up here, and they are... the the impact with the arrow boys. So eight uh, dice, four pluses are mortal wounds. One, two, three. Three war saves are six. War paint. No, so one was injured by the evocators, so two dead in total from the combined impactness. Now the Doomseeker. Seven. Should get him in. Then the Volkite Berserkers. Six. And they end up here. Right, now the Tyrant and the Iron Guts. Who's first? The Iron Guts. The Iron Guts. Get an eight. Eight dice, mortal wounds on four pluses. For two. Now the Tyrant. Move six. Okay, and his will, will activate on fives. Um, let me see if you got anything against monsters for that. Okay. Doesn't look like it. Fives. One. Right, now the fire slayers. Uh, eight inches required. The horn is plus one, so seven on the dice. No. Are they forwarding to victory? They will also forward to victory. Good stuff. Heroic stuff. Seven. They need a seven. They get in. You now roll one dice for each model in the unit. Four pluses, they do mortal wounds because they throw their bladed sling shields in well, as they charge. Sixes is mortal wounds. Did I say fours? You did. Sixes is mortal wounds. I thought it was fours no. or possibly sixes. Definitely I don't know. But we split the difference and say twos. <laughs> sixes. Two. Two. Kills an auric. No, it doesn't. Apparently, James can only pass his ward saves when the camera's off. Right, monstrous rampages. The war stomper is going to roar at the iron guts on a three plus. No, it's a one. They they can still receive and issue orders. And at the start of the combat phase, the tyrant is going to drink his flask of uh, stonehorn elixir, elixir, which gives him a three plus ward save for this battle round. I mean, it's it's like pouring fire onto an already burning fire. Now the Iron Guts are going to go first. 13 attacks. All out attacking, hitting on twos. Okay, nine hits coming through. Forgot to mention that James has declared all out defence as well. Right, wounding on threes. threes. Okay, so that's eight in total. Rend is two, so uh, plus one, minus two, saves of five plus. It's Whoa! A it's a good roll. One gets through and does three damage. A puny three damage. That's all. Three damage. Look at those saves. You well, it's a it's a tiny, tiny redress of 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 everything else you've ever experienced when playing war games. I hate to interrupt a uh, a hot warming moment. However, the Iron Guts are going to down the Iron Guts and they're going to choose to fight again at the end of combat. Okay. If they're alive, he might kill them all. Or, you know, maybe not. 
and James choosing to activate his favourite unit of all time, the Big Stabbers. Two are going into the Doomseeker. Two are going into the uh, other ones. Volkite Berserkers. Volkite Berserkers. Can he take the unit? Two into the Doomseeker. Six attacks. Hitting on threes. Four hits. Perfectly statistical. Yeah, all of them. So four at minus two rend. So four saves of six plus. Two damage each. That's eight damage. So he dies. He dies, but he does have a fight on death rule. So he gets... Because he is empowered by the rune, he gets an extra attack. So That's because his target died. He it turns out he didn't have to have killed the... Uh, the, the Gatebreaker himself, just it died. Um, so, four attacks with the Doomseeker X. Um, hitting on? Threes. So, two hits. No, hitting on twos because you're plus one to hit this turn. I am, thank you. So, three hits. Uh, threes to wound. So, that is two wounds at rend one. No save. So, that is going to be six damage in total. Wow. Yeah. He gets harder the more injured he gets. You can't get much more injured than being dead. Indeed. One save, so you'll kill one and damage another. Oh, no, one's already damaged. Yep, so it'll kill it. So I think we need to resolve the deaths later because attacks happen simultaneously, so these two need to go into there, and then we can resolve. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, 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 the, the attacks need to go in, yeah. and we'll do all the... De so who's died? Uh, so that one's, that one's died. died. And one. that one's taken... Well, it could be any of the others that yeah. take the... So hang on. It'll far, kill two. Far, it'll, it'll kill, kill two, two, yeah. Yeah. Straight straight up, two are dead. Okay, and now here's Runic War Iron. Oh, there's, oh, there's more. Four attacks. Hitting on twos. Wounding on threes. So three, three. wounds, no rend. Okay, so six is the save. You, you really want the sixes. Nope. No. How many damage each? Three again. Three, yeah. Uh, so that's nine. <laughs> This man is a missile. Well, he's dead. <laughs> oh. Takes two. So one is alive on one wound. One wound. After they've finished fighting. After they've all finished fighting. Okay. So, we now have the other two throw, uh, fighting at the... Um, Volkite Berserkers. At the Volkite Berserkers. Six attacks in on threes. That's an extra hit. Five hits. So, six hits. Only on threes. So three at rend two. They only have a six up save, a four, four up save. No, That's the, wrong, the wrong, wrong card, mate. They've got five up saves. They've got five, so they up save. five up saves. So they get nothing. And right. two each. That's four die. Okay, four die. Um, They're uh, Berserking Fury. Um, They get to fight on death as well. They do, but the only ones that have to be in range to fight, and now they're two inch range, because why wouldn't an axe 18 inches long give you a reach greater than a six foot pole axe? Because why not? Well, to be fair, they do sort of like clamber over each other and hurl themselves at the enemy. So maybe, maybe, maybe. There's a lot of attacks here. I mean, you've only got two wounds to get through. One wound to get through. Uh, so hitting on twos because of the uh, the rune. Yeah. So. Rune of Fury. And then... uh, gold. Three stroke wound. Blood and gold! Did they charge this turn? Yes. Yeah. Six is to hit or two. Oh no, they get an extra attack. No, they don't. They, don't. they get plus one to hit and plus one to wound from there. Uh, Add one to the attached characters because yeah. use melee weapon if they made a charge. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's a bit irrelevant. Well, well, yeah. we'll, we'll come back to that if this doesn't take the one wound <laughs> off the remaining naked Uruk. Okay, so that's, that's a lot. Three, six, nine. Nine ward saves of six plus. Come on, nine sixes. I'm you. <laughs> no. But not so much. Yeah. Right, so all the Uruks are dead, five of the Dwarden are dead, and four, sp four big stabbers. Can they throw them at any unit? We need to check this. So we check the wording, any unit within three inches, all of the big stabbers are being hurled at the ogres. They're bigger targets, more, there's more um, bragging rights and, and stuff. In, um, on fours, mortal wounds. So three, three D3 mortal wounds. Three, six, eight, kills two. One's already wounded. 
Kills two, and another one is feeling very, very queasy. So, that was brutal. <laughs> the, the big stabbers... You need more of those. Yes. You need more of those. The big stabbers have taken out nearly three whole units. The Carl and a... Uh, yeah, a badly wounded Ogor is left. Okay. Do you know where you're going? I can't remember your name. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Joe. I know you said Ian. Why did I know you say Ian? Wishful thinking, that. What? Uh, oh. The War Stomper has gradually turned round. What was that? As he gets his toes smashed with a mallet. So, Thunder Mace. Three attacks. The Tyrant is attacking. Hitting on threes. Two hits. Wounding on. Threes. Two wounds. Uh, rend two. Okay, you all out defended earlier, did you? Yeah, so yeah. two saves of five plus. Mm, close, but no mm. cigar. That's going to be eight damage because he is a giant breaker. Ow! Now the beast you glaive. Hitting on threes. Two hits. Wounding on threes. That's one. one wound. Rend, Rend one. One. One save of four plus. You get three now. No. Oh no, at least you're the... Yeah, okay, that's, that's better. It's a definite foul. Damage is um, D3 plus one. For four damage. Oh, six left. He's taken 29 damage. And that was adding extra damage on for the, the giant, giant breaker, breaker, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And is that all of his attacks? That is all of his attacks. Ha <laughs> ha! What's that going to do? Oh... Now we come to the Maniac Weird Knob, who is all out attacking. He's going to take down this enemy wizard. He's going to prove that green power is better. Three attacks, hitting on threes. Three four, hits. Four hit. hits. Four hits. He hits on three, fours normally, does he? He hits on fours normally. All right. Oh, yeah, he's a wizard, I suppose. Wounding on threes. Threes to wound. Four Ooh. wounds. At minus one. Was that... Was that plus one because of your finest hour as well? Was it two's to wound? Oh, yeah, two's to wound, but it's still a wounded. You're still a wounded. Um, right, render one. Render one. Okay, so four three saves of... Finest hour. Oh, yes. It's a three plus. Gosh darn it. <sighs> so the know, glory of Sigma. You're such a joke. I've not been willing ones and twos at any other point more today than I was just then. Four attacks from the Who's and Tusks. Hitting on threes. Come on, mess him up. Oh, that's an extra hit. And wounding on threes because of finest hour. Uh, three. Uh, no rend. Two plus eight. Of course. Takes a wound. You fell one of those, don't you? Like I said earlier, just do that eight more times and he'll die. Yeah. Oh, hashtag sigh. Now the advocators have attacked the Arrow Boys with the... Evocators, the, the mounts weapons, and then the electricity afterwards, they have scored 17 wounds. So 17 ward saves of 6 plus are required. Now, the, I, I've got a good feeling about this. Really? Note to self, do not disregard feelings. Now the Savage Oryx have activated and attacked the Fire Slayers. They uh, have scored 8 wounds, no rend. 4 plus saves? Two passes, six wounds, they have two each, so three die. Then over here, the ogres activated and killed nine more of the arrow boys. Then the arrow boys over here piled in and did nothing to either the, the Carl or the remaining glutton. Eight. Right, now we have the... Um, the oh. Volkite Berserkers with the Bladed Sling Shields, they are activating. They have one attack each, apart from the car who has an extra one. These also have eight-foot tiny hand axes, uh, so they have a range of two inches now. Uh, eight attacks with the Vorstag bonus and the Ru the Urgold Rune of Fury. They're hitting on twos, wounded on twos. 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 Six hits. And... Six. Five, Five wounds. wounds. Five. This, the axes have no rend. It's the war picks that have rend. So five saves of five plus. 
No, four plus. Because they've still got the extra one bonus to their save from this guy from hours ago. I ah, yes, that was a long... Was that Thursday? Probably. <laughs> one wound. One wound. One oh, it was on a wound. That guy died. Ward save? Oh, yeah. Ward save. Come on, live! No. no. Right, now the ward lock is activating. He's going to take out these four paladins. Yeah, James? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. How many attacks do you get? One. Oh, what? <laughs> Hits on a four. Oh. <laughs> we appear to have reached the hysteria part of the game. And that's a Tuesday for Joe. Now the retributors are attacking the weird knob. Uh, 11 attacks, because 2 each plus the prime. 6 is, though, blast things to ashes and do mortal wounds. Uh, I see a 6. So that's 2 mortal wounds. The rest will wound on 3s. Wounding on 3s. That looks like 6, 7, 8. Two, four, six, seven. 7. Does he have a save? Uh, save of 6 plus. Oh, I'd render 2. So, yeah, even with his finest hour, it does nothing. So that's 16 war saves. 16 ward saves. He's already taken two mortal wounds. Yeah, so... include then the ward saves. Yes. Ah, right. 16 ward saves. So you need to make... Many. 12 of them. Good luck. No. That's definitely no, not no. It's, it's definitely less than 12. Then this war dock attacked and missed. Then these decimators turned around and brutalised that war dock. So it's now back to the forces of destruction. Uh, where are we going? We'll go with the mega gargons into the iron guts. Okay. Right, now we're going to go through the war stomper. He can't pick up one of these ogres and throw them. They're too big because he's not feeling very well. Black Dwardin's within three inches and he's little. So, D6. For six. No bonus, three. He hurls the guy with the horn. Who at? Well, I need to roll four plus. Yep. Four plus, he hurls them. Who at? Uh, the iron guts. The iron guts in front of him. <laughs> two mortal wounds. Like an over-the-shoulder Dwardin head slam. <laughs> Seven attacks of the Titanic Border Club when you add it up and count it all. And are you all out of No, you all out of defender, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I'm out of command points now. So. All right. Let's hit uh, on threes. threes. Yeah. Three and four hits. Wounding on. Uh, Three threes. threes. Two. Minus two rend. So two saves of sixes. No. Two damage each. Okay. So that's four more damage. How many have they got each? They've got four. Four each. So still, they still die like a regular rogue war. Okay. Now what we got? Jump up and down. Jump up and down. Hitting on threes. Two. Wounding on threes. One. One. That's exactly what you've done every time. Yeah. At minus two, seven for six. No. D3. For two. Kills one. Kills that one. And then death grip. Death grip. <laughs> Hits on a three. Three. Wounds on a two. Five. Minus two. Six. <sighs> oh. Has death grip done it? He always rolls a six. Oh, I know. Ah, uh, scum. That's what he is. Yeah. Scum. Right. Have you done all your units, Joe? I can't remember. Ah, um, oh, you've got these to do, haven't you? The lone Volkite Berserker. And the lone... And the Ogre. The Ogre. Right. Both the Carl and the remaining... Uh, glutton. Completely... <laughs> they do nothing. Not a single wound. Then over here, the Boar Boys were tagged by the Gluttons. Between the two remaining Arrow Boys and the Boar Boys, they take out two of the Gluttons, which is not bad going for, for bone splitters that have been charged because they get all their bonuses on the charge. But now we have the Savage Big Boss, who is going to attempt to take out this Tyrant. With his Boss Chomper, six attacks. Yeah, with his Killer Instinct, six is to hit or a mortal wound in addition. And also an extra hit. Okay, so th was threes to hit. Yep. So one mortal wound and six hits. Yep. Wounding on threes. Three. Rend? Minus one. So it is going to be um, five up saves. So 
to fail. Two damage each. Okay, is he going to pass the hit off to the Iron Guts? He is feeling alive after drinking his drought. So oh, have... yeah. So it's draft. Draft, thank you. So five water. I've forgotten he's had that. He's. Yeah, he's fine. The stone horse, his, his bones have turned to stone. <laughs> the hacks of the bone axe, the bone chomper, are just doing nothing. Now we come to the Iron Guts. So they're fighting a second time. Three attacks each, plus one for the champ. Hitting on... Twos, because of all that attack. Ah, yes. And then wounding on threes. Five. At rend of two? Rend two. So you... It's your final star, wasn't it? No, no all at defence. All at defence, yes. So four saves for five plus... One past. So three go through. They are... Three damage each. Three damage each. He had six wounds remain, remaining. Timber. He's taken nine. Timber, roll off the timber. Timber! Where are you putting him? I need to think a moment. So the timber is going to land here and do D3 mortal wounds to these liberators. For one. For one wound. Crushing up leg or something At the end of the combat phase gulping bites did no damage here for this unit of gluttons this did score some damage but the war paint saved the uh, the boar boy the results of battle shock no one ran over here everyone's held firm this volkite berserker he, he he went off into a frothing rage and was no longer a uh, a useful combatant uh, these two arrow boys, they also ran away. No one else could fail. But the end of the forces of order, uh, three points are scored for holding one, two, three objectives. As we go into destruction, turn three. Okay, so we are summarising in the forces of destruction's turn. So in the hero phase... There was um, this guy's finest hour. No, it's the Savage Big Boss's finest hour. It's the Savage Big Boss's finest hour. What was he? He did. He tried to cast a. Oh, yeah. He, Where was your other heroic action? He finest hour. He finest hour. I thought he did. Why yeah. I didn't say it, I don't know. So he fights his finest hour. It's the Big Boss's finest hour. There's some heroic recovery over here by that guy. Uh, and his finest hour also and it's the tyrant's finest hour as well we shall turn the tyrant around then there was arcane bolt cast by this guy and then unbound arcane bolt cast by this guy and unbound by the evocators then in the shooting phase the arrow boys kill the remaining glutton with lots and lots and lots of arrow fire and we have just completed the charge over here by this war dock. We now come in to the fight phase. So where are we starting the fight phase, Mr. James, sir? We'll start with Gulgaz Stoneclaw. So you get six attacks, hitting on... He's going to... Um, all last attack. Okay. So he's hitting on twos. Yeah. Uh -huh. Everything hits. No sixes, that's annoying. Um, I can re-roll a hit. You can, well, can re-roll a wound in a yeah. minute. Re yeah, but if I re-roll a, a hit and I get a six... But it's it one in six chance, but a wound... I'm still going to do it. Uh, okay. Because if I get a six... Please don't roll a one. You're going to roll a one. Why would you... No. No, so I'll still six hit. Re-roll a wound. Everything wounds. Uh, minus one wound. You would have gone two... Because it's your finest hour. Plus yes. one to wound. Right, okay, yeah. So, so six, six at minus... So four up save. Two. Minus Min one. Minus one. Four so save because it's fine to Ah, uh, yep. Failed one. One goes through. Are you passing it off to the... What's the damage? Two. Two? No, he's, he's a death cheater. Five All right. Lord. And he cheats death once. He takes a wound for the first time. Then, using his Lemmy Adam ability, he goes all scrappy-doo, and the War Dock gets to fight next, but missing out the Ogor's turn. So one attack, we'll hit on the four. Yes! That becomes two attacks. Or two hits, rather. Wounding on threes. One wound. One wound. Minus one rend. Four up save. <sighs> Anticlimactic. 
Okay, your turn to pick a unit. Ooh, I think we're going to go with the gluttons over there. So all out attack by the gluttons, all out defense by the boar boys. 14 wounds have been scored. So saves uh, five plus after the pluses and minuses on the 14 wounds. So seven get through, which makes 14 ward saves. Pass one, 13 damage taken. There's 12 in the unit. There's 12 in the unit. Well, so actually, they... there's 10 in the unit because one's taking two damage. So they are taken out. So the war dock attack the evocators. Nothing happened. Over here, the uh, oryx put one wound on the fire slayers. The fire slayers killed one oryx in return. Then, way back over here, the evocators killed the war dock. The only units left to fight are the tyrant and the two iron guts. The tyrant attacks the big boss with his thunder mace. Three attacks. Hitting on threes. Two hits. Winning on twos for finest hour. Of course. So it's two at rend two. Don't get save. No save. So six damage. Three each. Ward save of it's just six. It's no, no better for him, is it not? No. I can give him an artifact which increases it by two, but he hasn't got it. Right. So that's four so damage. Four damage taken. How many wounds does he have? I want to say six. I need to check. Okay. Well, whilst you're checking, the we'll be roll... The Beast yep. hitting on threes. Two hits. We're on twos. So one wound, one wound. rend one. So it goes through. How Finest many damage? Hour. Hour. So oh, save for six. Yeah, of course you do. D3. For three. For three. Ward saves of six. I need two for him to be alive. You do. You get one. He is exactly dead. Of course, maybe he isn't dead, because... Wow. Well, I mean, he's definitely removed the casualty. Then the Iron Guts take out the remaining Wardock with ease. And at the end of the, the Forces of Destruction's turn, there are a unit of Savage Orc boys. Half a unit. Half a unit of Savage Orc boys. A little over half a unit of Arrow boys. And that's the lot. They get one point for holding the subjective. It will be certainly taken from them in turn four. And then the um, order will score four points in turn four, four points in turn five, meaning that they get double the number of victory points. And it is a major victory for the forces defending the siege of Excelsis. But the... The cost has been high. These few remaining troops, having seen off these last few Uruks, will shore up the line again, waiting for the next wave. There are thousands of bone splitters following Stoneclaw through the breach. I don't know how well this line will fare when the next wave hits. So, that's how this one ended. Guys... I mean, I almost dread to ask, <laughs> how how did that go? What what are your thoughts? I think for me the highlight was this melee around here when there was so much mutually assured destruction. Yes, it was almost yeah. like they all exploded. Yes. I do not think quite so much devastation has been bought with a barrel of mead and, <laughs> and, and some meat. Yes, those, those ogres definitely earned their keep. Most definitely. The, well, they've got hundreds of ogre cell swords in the city. Worth every drop, I think. They were they were savage. <laughs> they um, were indeed. And those Eva cases, I found this before, their mortal wound output, yeah. devastating. Yeah. And when they get the empower spell off as well, so they're wounding on twos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it was uh, yeah, a I, thing. I was very, very anxious with the first turn. Being given the first turn, I thought it was definitely the right move for you. But then, after getting across the board, you were effectively hemmed in a little bit, and we managed to hold you back from the objectives, yeah. which I think is probably what what swung it in the end. The, the combats and the dice wall rolls were an issue. I think. But, I think the pro part of the problem was the there was a lot of points tied up in the mega gargants, and they were the only thing that could really do any damage to the stormcasts. Yeah. Yeah. And for a couple of turns. They were mediocre at best. Yes. 
and you didn't take out enough of the Stormcast to survive the retaliation. And then you were just down to the Bone Splitters. And the Bone Splitters needed to take on the things with the lighter armor, which they've done reasonably well. There's only a few, what, four or five Ogors left on the table. Yeah. I mean, even the Arab boys in combat against um, Gluttons. Yeah, yeah, they, absolutely. They were taking they, them out. They were taking them out. Yeah, certainly, yeah. yeah. And there's, only, uh, there's only a couple of Fire Slayers left on the board. There's like five here as well. So the the bone splitters took out their targets, and but the the gargants, yeah, they uh, they didn't quite do their uh, keep up their end on account Not of uh, on account of a little bit of little bit of fluffage. But with the gargants, they've got such a, a high ceiling. Like when when it swings, like we saw over there with the the liberators, a single what's it swing went through with the Meneer, fifteen damage. Yes. Brutal, absolutely brutal. And it's good to see, but with swingy weapons, again, it swings one way, swings the other, right? Yeah, yeah, indeed. And uh, for a couple of turns, it did definitely swing the one way. Well, we uh, we were playing out a story, mm. and the story here was the defenders of this part of the wall were stalwart, and they thoroughly repulsed the the first incursion. Those they they ran in to stop those mega gargants and hold back the green horde behind them. And they have succeeded. But the horde is massive. It is thousands strong, and it will continue to pour through the breach. So, on that note, it's uh, it's like getting off at midnight, and we everyone's got hosts to go to. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming and playing. It's been a pleasure, as always. Um, shout out to uh, to all my channel members and Patreons for your ongoing support. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you want to support me, check out the description in the video. Uh, things like channel memberships, uh, affiliate links, Patreon. They're all options if that's something you want to do. If not, I'm just glad you've joined us and I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed watching as much as we've enjoyed playing. Uh, so until next time... Say, what did I call you at the start? I don't R know. Like, ran a long time ago. Like, ran most random excellent fellows. Most, uh, that wasn't what you said. No. Well, well, we'll go with that. Say bye, excellent fellows. Bye, bye excellent, excellent fellows. fellows. Bye. bye.